to the Nen Show podcast. I am your host, Craftsdorf, and this is my co-host, Mathwiz. Here we are. Yeah, it's part two of this this big arc, and it's it's a good part. Yeah, That's, uh, <laughs> I was actually worried because you were kind of quiet. Like you get you said, uh, reacted like once, and then you're just you had a question, and that was it. And I'm just like, did did Mathwiz like this arc or not? <laughs> <laughs> I hated um, it. One Piece is terrible now. <laughs> well, there's also a particular thing in this episode we'll get to talk about. Um, so that I'm definitely curious as to your thoughts on. So, um, though before we start, I'm looking at my volume and I realized I've been saying for ages, oh, Oda said that Luffy's a man of action. And uh, turns out that was a spoiler for, for the volume 54 SBS. Because I'm looking at it right. Oh, do you you have still have the SBS in your reading, right, or wherever you're reading yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, I, I still okay, have good. that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at the one right before chapter five two five, and it's because someone asks like, why does he, Luffy never have internal monologues or anything like that? And oh, it says that it's because he wants Luffy to be a man of action. And I've been mentioning that since like the beginning, because I guess I thought it was in the SBS way earlier. So I was, whoops. I mean, it's it still works. It's not like a a big spoiler or anything. But uh, I just like oh oh there it is, huh? Um, so anyway, did you, uh, I have two comments. Do you have any comments? Um, if I said that I didn't, would you be surprised? Not at this point, no. And there were more spoilers than usual. Um, they were kind of, some of them weren't as marked as well. Um, maybe everyone thought because I spoiled something last time, it was okay. No, um, I mean, I, it's just the exposition I spoiled. Oh no, I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't really care i guess i don't know i did i guess i did like from ruin a potential surprise for you like when things were connected that you hadn't thought about so for that i apologize but like it's not like a big plot reveal i guess like i don't know maybe it's just uh, how do you feel about spoilers in general i think we've talked about it better forget like uh yeah with spoilers like i'm normally not too much of a stickler for it but like in this case i had put off reading one piece for a pretty long time and now like we're doing it for the podcast so like i'd rather not be spoiled but then again like i already knew some spoilers for one piece like yes there's there's still i think one spoiler yet that i know that hasn't come up yet yeah and then well you did know about uh mary i believe you knew about that one oh Um, yeah yeah because i had heard people talk about a ship (laughs) And I was like, oh, this is it when I got to Cry- it. Crying over a boat. And then you, even though you're spoiled, you cried over the boat. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, so first comment, um, Hulk and Perez asked mostly me about what, what my favorite One Piece movie is. Um, I have not seen most of them in quite a while. Um, so my favorite would be, favorites would be uh, Film Gold or the Baron Omatsuri one, which is f- number six. Um and we're actually gonna come. I'm actually gonna bring up the movies later, but um, I don't know, Mathews. Maybe I'll give you like a, a a watch guide for some of the worthwhile anime stuff. Because there's some of the worthwhile stuff that, in the anime that's worthwhile. Like uh, some people were asking you to watch the G8 uh, filler arc. Um, and there's a couple of movies that are okay. And that's pretty much it, honestly. Like a few of the movies, maybe one one or two specials, and then the G8 filler arc. And most of that I haven't seen in a while, so I can't uh say too much. Like you know um. And my enjoyment, because I watched, I think, film number four. I've watched it like three or four times, and I, I like one time I didn't enjoy it so much. Like one time, I, the, I really enjoyed it some of the other times. So I don't know where it like ranks as far as favorite movies go. So I don't know. Um, and my the last comment I had is Greenbird was sort of talking about um, Aokiji a bit, and specifically calling him like wishy washy and sort of how he decides to follow his uh, you know marine ideals or not. I oh his example I don't really agree with because he said that um like oh he uh. You know, he killed Saul, but freed Robin. But, like, Saul was, like, a marine traitor who had, who just destroyed, like, several battleships and, you know, killed or at least injured an unknowable amount of marines. So it's like, yeah, he'd done something wrong. So Aokiji, even if it was, you know, for good reason, you know, he st- he was, st- as a marine, like, you know, Aokiji, you know, couldn't let that fly. But with Ro- young Robin, she hadn't done anything wrong. Like, she was just a fucking child who happened to know this ancient language, she, and that was the whole fucking point, is that he let her go because, you know, she do what, you know, you know if you do evil, I will find you. Like, so, I, I don't know, Alkiji's, and I do think he's kind of weird because he is kind of just, like, uncertain, like, he's definitely has, like, you know, he acts on justice because he wants to believe in it, I think, but he also, you know, he makes concessions and, you know, like, he didn't kill Luffy, so it's like, you know, he's deliberately very confused, I would say, um... But I think it still think it makes sense. Um, I don't know if you wanted to say. I do. I actually have more to say, but it involves something I think that comes up later. 
uh, just a little like a little tidbit with one character's thing um it's not really super important but uh, did you have any thoughts on LKG like from your perspective with less of the story in mind or not that he's come up in a while but um yeah I mean like I guess to be an admiral and kind of be sort of iffy on like how he actually does his job um I don't know because like Garp is a vice admiral and he also can kind of be selectively eek like I, I don't, I don't yeah. know I it's not something I'd really given a whole lot of thought to yeah, we'll, 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 uh, we'll talk about it more, I'm sure, because these characters, I mean, um, you know, they're, they're due for some screen time uh, next arc. Whoops, uh, was that a spoiler? I mean, you, we see it at the end of it, like we see them both there. Um, so anyway, um, so yeah, let us move into the actual discussion, because uh, this, this is a fun one. Um, it's going to be shorter, because it's only, like, that's the thing, it's only like 24 chapters. Like, I think I saw someone in the comments there, like, in the anime, it was 40 episodes, so, like, this is the point where you, like, stop watching <laughs> because, like, they just drag that out. Like, yeah, they're de- One Piece has dense chapters. Like, we were com- mentioning that with, uh, like, Naruto got denser at some point. Well, Bleach was, you know, each chapter was pretty sparse because it was, like, made to just flow. And Jesus Christ, it was quick reading Bleach. But, like, so it's, like, even though they're dense, it still doesn't, like, one episode or less. Like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... I, didn't, I stopped watching before this point, so... Um, so yeah, starting out, we continue off from the last scene where Garp and Ace are talking and they have a brief conversation about their dad. Um, and Ace insists that his only father is Whitebeard. Um, not sure if I have much to say on that yet. Yeah, I was going to say, I have a, I, because I don't have my official volumes now, I have like these screenshots. (laughs) And so like, I have one of that scene of Ace talking like, oh, Whitebeard's my real, or well, not not real father, but like his you know, o- yeah. yeah, his yeah, only well, father. Well, cause yeah, right, cause Whitebeard, you know, like you know, he says, um, you know, he take he takes Ace on as, as his son, you know son on his crew. Um, we'll probably and we'll probably see more of Whitebeard later. Um, so yeah, but yeah, this is one of those th- things that I was like, I feel like I had something I wanted to say about it before. Um, mm, but like when you're reading, I'm, yeah. it, I'm like, what? What was it? <laughs> Um, yeah, and this is like an, an in-between arc, so there's like setting up for later stuff while it's still its own its own story, um, so yeah, it's cool, but anyway, um, so yeah, um, Momoga's ship goes by and they see Buggy the Clown's uh, flag, um, who they don't yes. even recognize, <laughs> um, so, and then we see apparently Buggy got captured, his crew is freaking out. And they, they actually want to go save him. Like, you know, is their captain, he did change, you know, from Luffy. Like, he's not, like, killing his crewmates anymore, or at least as far, you know. And so they want to go save him. And then, but no, it's like, uh, yeah, you, you fuckers want to go to Impel Down? Uh, good luck. And so and they, they're like, okay, never mind. I and hope you at least have a... his crew. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, anyway, then it cuts to Impel Down, which is this brutal fucking place. Like... I, I like all the little scenes of just, like, the, the just there's so many fucking skel- skulls and, ooh, Jesus Christ, how many people fucking die here? It's awful. Yeah, this this prison felt, like, very, like, as far as One Piece goes, this prison felt, like, pretty dark, because there was, like, a lot of, there was, like, the forest of, like, spikes and, ugh. Yeah, the crimson forest that people just, like, they're forced to walk on it and, like, get cut constantly. And, oh, th- but they can go down further to the even worse hells. Um... <laughs> So if they want to, like, yeah, it's fucking brutal. Um, which is extra funny because it's, like, this is one of the, like, darkest arcs in the series, like, content-wise. But, like, anime opening 12, which played for a lot of this arc, is this super light and cheery song. <laughs> 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 it's fucking hilarious. Like, you'll see from the, 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 um, the opening clip in the podcast that I already have ready for the episode, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it's great. Um... So anyway, um, so yeah, Hancock and Luffy head in. Uh, Luffy is hiding <laughs> under the robe, um, and we get introduced to Hannibal, Hannibal, uh, Hannibal, and uh, Domino. Just some of the Impel Down's uh, staff before Hancock helps Luffy, um, you know, slip in pretty much. And <laughs> she keeps freaking out every time Luffy like says anything because she like mishears him. Like there's one. That doesn't work as well in English, where um, um, he says thank you, and she heard, heard I love you, where it's like, 
in Japanese, he said arigato, and she heard ashiteru, which is, you know, thank you and I love you. So it doesn't quite work as well as English, but, like, I remember what it says um, just from the... And I, I'm not sure how I would translate that one. Um, like, it, you know, not every p- wordplay bit has as elegant a translation as the Family Jewels uh, Kintama one from last time. So, but yeah, any notes about Luffy slipping in? Or... Um... Because it's mostly just like kind of the setup. You don't have as much as we don't have as much to say, I suppose. So, or I don't. No, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> yep. Anyway, um, see, so yeah, Luffy slips in. He's he's bugging <laughs> he's bugging prisoners, and then <laughs> he ends up running and into a uh, Buggy the Clown. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's like because um, you didn't mention it last time because Brogue Works comes in later, and I was wondering if you'd predict that from the cover story. If you remembered, because they were... Well, I mean, like, they had said... um, I mean, I guess I had a little bit of help, because, like, I was able to see in the arc listings, like, oh, Impel Down, so we're going to this place. And then, like, I saw, obviously, in the cover story, like, oh, all these people are going to Impel Down. And I was like, I wonder if they'll be relevant later. Hmm. (laughs) Right, right. And, of course, at the start of this arc, they mentioned... um, like the baptism and oh crocodile and Jinbei and ace they they went through the b- boiling baptism without blinking an eye so it's like once you start the arc it's like you know all these because that's what's really cool about this arc is you have these returning characters and it's like like i can't think of off the top of my head a similar arc where it's like you have so many returning characters being in such like relatively important roles like com- like i thought about the the hunter um election and hunter hunter and it's like yeah, there were a lot of returning characters, but they were all kind of in the background. Like, they mostly didn't do anything. So it was cool to see them, but they the, the important characters were, like, re- major ones from the, you know, like, uh, so so this arc's kind of neat because, like, because the Straw Hats are gone, like, all of them, there's room to focus on all these other characters. So we get Buggy being, like, a tangential main character. <laughs> or, and of course, the Brogue Works guys, and it's cool. No, yeah, I was, I was a pretty big fan of, like, the 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 people we got to see in this arc um uh yeah i don't i don't know i just like this little and plus like when oda did that like the the cover art of just like this uh what what like a motley yeah, crew, down the crew term, just... like just this ragtag group of people and it's like oh this is cool i like this yeah it's like not it's like a, one of the typical like straw hats hanging out pages but instead of the straw hats it's like luffy and the impel down escape crew and like yeah i really like that one because it's it's weird to see like yeah there's just the broke works guys ivankov and jinbei and it's like oh you know it's these guys these guys it's like okay cool um because they're 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 kind of a bunch that was like thrown together more or less and happens to be where like it's not like the straw hats where they were you know gradually built up over time this is just kind of like yep we're here uh let's get out so, it's pretty cool. So anyway, um, Buggy is still a weak bitch. <laughs> and, you know, they fight for a bit. And it's also kind of neat seeing the guards, like, gradually realize what's going on. Because um, they're like, oh shit, it's Luffy. Oh shit, he's Ace's brother. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and one other bit I like is uh, how Luffy has uh, the, the treasure map to Captain John's treasure, which is just an ornamental... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, bra- bracelet that he got uh, a thriller bark <laughs> from Nami. Like, you even pointed that out, and that's... <laughs> I laughed, because, of course, I knew it, it was going to be relevant. <laughs> but, uh, every little thing... <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you're you're right now that, you, now that you mention it. Yeah, I think it was mentioned in the SBS, too, but, yeah, it's like that, that one little thing that Luffy just... Nami just gave it... Yeah, it's just it's just looks... It's just a thing, whatever. And, no, nope, it's actually... And, because, Cap- I think in the SBS, even mentioned that Captain John was uh, one of the zombies, because he was mentioned by name. So, yep. <laughs> the, just the little, little things. Um, I really like the part, though, when, like, they, they do their exchange, and then Buggy's, like... Buggy's, like, he he's all... Um, crying and... <laughs> yeah, he's, like, grateful or, and whatnot, and he's like, Thank you, Straw Hat. And then the, immediately the next panel, he's like, now to ditch this guy. And then he just crashes into the wall. <laughs> and then Louis's like, let's go through this wall then. And Is there a like... shortcut through that wall? Are you are you leading me to... <laughs> well, I, I love how, like, Luffy honest Luffy just is. believes him because he's a Luffy. <laughs> right, right. Like, he, 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 you know, he connects to people, like, deeply, but it doesn't mean they're being honest. And, like, I, I especially like the moment with later with Mr. Three and Buggy, and they're like, ha, ah, we're leaving Straw Hat later. And he's like, okay, bye, thanks for the help. And he's like, you're, you're too fucking nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and uh, since we are uh, yeah but they they sort of skim through the crimson hell and reach the second floor and i also like how like 
Mr. Three and Buggy get along really well. Like, they're both these sneaky assholes. So, of course, they get along. <laughs> and it's like, you know, he's, there are these two characters that, you know, normally would never never have a reason to interact because it's just like some Brogorks mook and, you know, some guy. But then here they are and they're, they, they have good chemistry and it's great. <laughs> oh, man. It'd be something like if Hunter Hunter had a, a, cha- a, a, you know, a part of an arc focusing on, like, I don't know, like, two random characters like Hanzo and Bisky or whatever, and it would just be, like... Yeah. Uh, it's just people you'd never think would, like, cross paths, and it's like, here they are. But actually, and playing off each other and having cool, inter- neat interactions like that, you know, that's that's the kind of stuff... Well, it, it's really great in long-running stories because, like, in their own contexts, they work, but now they're, you know, just playing off each other like normal, like, in, in other contexts, and it's really neat. So it's like it's like a crossover. Like, Disney's like, look, The Avengers is the most ambitious crossover of all time, and I'm like, Impel Down? No. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we cut to... In, and we're introduced to the head warden, uh, Magalan. And his powers, his poison powers, and like <laughs> the gu- they're just so dysfunctional. Like I love the panel where it's like um, Bo Hancock's like uh, you know stepping on Magellan and telling you know insulting him, and then Hannibal's just like sitting in Magellan's seat, and he's like, "This will be my chair someday." And they're like, they're all just so stupid. <laughs> like this is the government. How does the government function? I like the panel <laughs> where he's like, "I got poisoning for my poison soup," and it's like, "I think you got poisoned because it was poison." <laughs> <laughs> this, oh man oh yeah and um <laughs> i also like the one exchange where hannibal's like i wish you'd hurry up and resign i mean uh no they want to see firefist ace and he's like that was a very hurtful slip of the tongue <laughs> like, <laughs> just uh god i the one piece's character character interactions are really fun <laughs> what i thought was kind of interesting though about this like the warden in particular was that like a lot of well i guess not everybody because like crocodile wasn't very goofy but like there aren't many characters yeah. in, in One Piece so far who have been, like... I don't know, like, he's got the goofy side, but I feel like because of just the the nature of the setting here, like, this big prison, like, he doesn't come off... Like, I mean, he's got this little moment here where he's kind of goofy, but for the majority of the arc, like, he's more of a serious guy. Like, yeah. even when he fights, he- like, there's nothing really goofy about the way he fights. Like, he's pretty efficient. Which I, well, I yeah, just thought was interesting. Brutal. A lot he of one like, piece he, he kills are... people. Yeah. Or gone. Yeah. Well, I think I think so, now I'm just kind of looping my point back around. No, it's fine. Yeah. Well, because it's he also just like if someone happens to die, like because well they they kind of bring that up later with, later with Shiryu, but I'll, um I guess I'll mention it here because like Shiryu was like indiscriminately p- killing prisoners because you know he could like he got but where it's like Magellan, I feel like. He, he, people might end up dead, you know, and he's, just, but like, at least he tries to kill with a purpose. Like in the scene where they were on level six talking to Ace, he killed, executed the one prisoner and, you know, they were all being unruly and loud and like Hancock is trying to have a conversation with Ace. So it's like in killing, you know, the, that pirate, he, you know, re, re, um, restates his authority and sort of like controls them. So it's like, he's not, it's not quite the same as Shiryu just randomly killing guys. Cause at least, you know, Magellan doing it had a purpose. And then during one of the fights, like one of the underlings got hit by his poison. It was just like, well, next time stay out of my way. Like, you know, everyone else was running away, but that guy got caught. So it's like, you, you know, and if they have antidotes, so he probably would have been fine. Fine. Um, so yeah, it's like, I just wanted to point that out. So it's like, he's very brutal, but at the same time, it's like, um, it's, it's still grounded in, in, you know, he's, he's at least has a reason to be, it's not just like senseless, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so anyway, um, Luffy and Buggy reach level two, they bump into Mr. Three. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. They meet Mr. Three on level two, but then they meet Mr. Two on level three. I don't understand. <laughs> um, and then we cut down to level six and we finally see the, the last level, the, the last warlord of the sea who was mentioned, like, fucking chapter, like, 70 or so, um, Jinbei. Did you have any thoughts or reactions on seeing Jinbei for the first time? Uh, he sure has a character design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying. Um, I mean, he does seem to be, uh, I don't know, like, even in this in this arc, like, we got to see his powers at the end, and we got to kind of see how his personality works, because it's interesting to have a warlord of the sea who's actually, like, you know, maybe not always. Maybe it's a just a certain context. But yeah, like he's actually like not a not a total shithead. Like he, <laughs> yeah, he, like he's very honorable. Like um, he mentions debt. Like you know, he 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 worked with Whitebeard because Whitebeard saved Fishman Island after when the pirate age started. You know, and he wants you know 
he he wants to save Ace. Like that's the whole reason he's in prison is because he didn't want to fight Whitebeard. So um and yeah so yeah he's definitely very honorable. Um I'd also kind of forgotten that like um Arlong was his first mate or whatever and so like then there was the, <laughs> there was a little panel where it was kind of like you know reminding us that that was the case. I was like oh yeah that's right he is the guy. Right right they were they were shipmates before. Um, but yeah, so Luffy and the gang keep going. They have some more adventures in the prison, um, fighting just weird shit and uh, weird animals. Oh yeah, the cover story ended, um, the, bro- the Cypher Pole 9 one. Um, so I guess to summarize it, uh, Cypher Pole 9 did, uh, Blue No helped everyone escape the bombing of it in his lobby. Um, they, you know, uh, chipped in to give Luchi medical expenses to help him with, uh, his medical expenses. Then they just sort of relaxed before the Marines came after them, I think, to, you know, re- you know, because they're like secret agents. And I guess the issue is that they might be might have been traitors. But then um, they do get in contact with Spandam and Luchi says that I, I, it's something like we'll be back. And then they sail off and Spandam and Spandine were plotting something. So, yeah, uh, there that's another cover story down. Um, and one does start this arc where we're seeing the Straw Hats sort of, like, on their respective islands, just, like, short little bits, seeing what they're up to. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, one thing, um, so, yeah, they're, everyone's talking on the, uh, or we, we cut to Marineford and, you know, Sengoku and Garp are talking about Luffy because they find out that Luffy's breaking into Ample Town. <laughs> and Garp's just laughing his ass off, of course. But, um, I want to point something out here, because Sengoku mentions, uh, the gold, the, that, uh, the, the only person to escape from Ample Town, a golden lion, um the, the pirate, pirate that, can, that fly. can fly yes um he's not going to be appearing in the manga because he's already had an appearance in the movie uh one piece film strong world uh he's the main antagonist of that movie um and i specify well because there's also a bonus chapter called chapter zero which is like like that's like an extra chapter of the manga that's like a prequel to strong world because like honestly like people might disagree i feel like strong world is it's like basically canon there are two like continuity errors one is that uh brook on sabote says that um this is that was his first time fighting as a straw hat pirate and the other one is that zoro i don't remember him being particularly like wounded in the movie because other than that it fits like very neatly between thriller bark and sabote and also wraps up the the plot line from chapter zero which is considered canon because it's like an actual chapter drawn by oda so like it's like it's not something that's going to get referenced in the story and it's like i remember liking it but um i don't remember how much but yeah, it's like i was gonna say when this got brought up and then later oda like mentioned the movie in the sbs and i was like oh so is that why that chat is is that why this little offhand mention exists because of the movie <laughs> yes so, so like, like if you feel movie, like it this would be a good good is it worth watching? I liked it. Um, I I don't I don't remember like I'd have to rewatch like a bunch of them to see which one my favorite was because I mentioned it. Um, because it's like there's a trilogy of movies that was actually worked on by Oda, so it has like some of his and um like input I suppose, and I don't know like how much he is involved out, outright. But um, Strong World is the first one. Uh, Z or Z is the second one of those movies, and Gold is the third one. Uh, you can't watch Zed or Gold yet, and they don't fit as neatly into the continuity as but Strong wait, World does. But Golden Lion isn't in the Gold movie. <laughs> what? Oh no, you're misleading me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you you can watch uh, read Chapter Zero. I think I may, I may, um I'm pretty sure it doesn't have any spoilers for anything. Like it has a bunch of like returning characters, but they're all. Um, like it's it's yeah it, it, there's no spoilers and then um because we um and then yeah you can watch Strong World if you want um it's just one movie so it's not that bad but um so yeah I don't think it I don't I don't know canon I've also heard that canon in general just works differently in Japan like somehow like uh they just don't mind it as much um so I, I'm not sure about that like I'd, I'd be curious to learn more but um anyway so just thought I'd mention that while he was brought up because yeah the movie you can watch the movie. <laughs> at this point i mean so. and it, it's not like this is the first manga to do that kind of like promotion thing like i remember in, in dragon ball there was the the panel of bardock which is just like oh yes. if you've seen the tv special you know who bardock is right right um though i th- what i've heard with that one like i maybe have to, i'd have to wait until that dragon ball dissection gets to it or maybe it already did well, but I, it's yeah, like because yeah, I... I mean it was kind of the the inverse there where like the special had come out first yes. and then toriyama, and toriyama was like, liked oh, it hey, yeah, so that was exactly cool. I'm right gonna put right it in my manga. so 
right, and then right. he so made Dragon Ball Minus, kind of an and then example. things got messy. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh <laughs> and now there's a broly movie coming out which yay is broly gonna... win broly now <laughs> um sorry but just but yeah, on, anyway. like on, on the or, go on. you you had talked about like japan treating canon differently or something and that just makes it it just makes it funny like on the topic of canon like the the stuff with like broly and dragon ball minus and whatnot it's got people in a frenzy about it and i'm just like i don't care <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if the movie, like, if the people like the Bardock special, it not being canon or being of disputed canon doesn't stop it from being go- as good as it was, you know? Like, that's the thing. So, like, I enjoy, like, as I said, I like Film Gold and uh, Movie 6, Baron of Matsuri. Like, they're not canon, probably. They're they're good. I like them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just, I mean, it is kind of, like, there's, like, what, 12 or 13 One Piece movies and maybe, like, four or five of them are worth your time. So it's like most of the movies aren't... The Hunter Hunter movies also weren't very good. Yeah, I was going to say, that um, tends to be how things go with the, the shonen movies, is they I find that most of them aren't very good. Or, you yeah. know, like, they're... Eh, like, well, because it's like they're... Ma- or or even if, like, they're good, like, they're not... Like, they're not nearly to the standard of, like, the original material. Like, I watched one of the Hunter Hunter movies, and... It was fine, but, like, compared to Hunter x Hunter, it was pretty bad. Well, because it's made by the anime staff who are, like, they have the same source material, but they don't have the insights that the author does. So, like, because the author knows even more of the story that's been, than is, has been published. So it's, like, you know, you sometimes do get, like, author input. So it's, like, like with the, the One Piece film trilogy that is has direct input from Oda. You know, I, like, so it's, like, you know, the, it's understandable that those movies are you know, higher than average than the rest of the One Piece movies because they have the author on them. And the other one that's liked is because is a, it's a Mamoru Hosada movie. And he's like this well-known anime film guy. So, of course, a movie by him is better so than normal. So, yeah, it's like it there's reasons for things. It could also just be like those kind of movies tend to have like a specific formula. So, like, um, you're kind of taking the the long-running shonen action formula, and then you're, like, condensing it down into mm. a little, like, yeah. one-and-a-half, two-hour movie. and Like, one thing those movies always do is they start up with, like, 15, 20 minutes of, like, this whole sequence meant to introduce the characters, because just in case someone doesn't know the stories, they can still watch the movie, because they know, they know the characters, so they can engage in it. So, like, as someone who knows the source material, those scenes are always kind of, like, annoying. Like, even in Film Gold, I like that movie, but, like... You know, it had, it had that big introduction scene showing off all the characters, and I'm like, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I've read not like One Piece like three or four times. I don't need to know who you are. <laughs> oh man. Maybe one day we can do a Nen Show discussion on just a bunch of random shonen movies, and we can have a spinoff series. <laughs> the Known Show, where we just watch a bunch of movies. Yeah. No. Oh God, all the Naruto movies and the Bleach movies. <laughs> oh God. And most of the One Piece movies, Jesus. Um, I don't know, maybe some of them are good. That's the thing, we'd be pleasantly surprised. Um, so anyway, um, back to the actual manga we're discussing. <laughs> um, so yeah, Luffy, Luffy and Gang gets to level 3. Um, they continue to fight their way out and eventually meet Mr. 2. I, I had a I had a little moment there when, 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 <laughs> when, the, when this character showed up again. I was like, yes, he's back. <laughs> Mr. 2 is a great boy. <laughs> And sometimes girl, I suppose. Uh, he gets to decide. He has the, that's what's cool about his power. He could just change. Um, so yeah. Um, I also really liked, get, uh, or, before we move on, I did really like yeah, how, yeah. like, as they drop down the different levels, like, because, like, there's different, uh, like, a different value, or not, not value, what's the word I'm looking for? Different level of, like, threat for the criminals. So, like, as they descend yes. each level, they, they, like, add a new member to the crew. And even when you have, like, the characters trying to, like, Mr. 3 and Buggy try to, like, escape, and they just keep getting dragged down because, like, the floor is given out or whatever. <laughs> um, so, like, you just keep yeah. adding more to this little crew, and it's it's just fun. Right, right. Like, and, well, and it's also perfect how the Baroque works are were separated because, you know, it's, like, you know, 3, 2, 1, because, like, the whole thing was that the different numbers had different levels of strength, so they just get divided by floors. You know, Buggy was even earlier than Baroque works, so he's on the fir- first floor, you know, so and so on. Um... <laughs> Though, well, it's kind of broken a bit because Crocodile, like, is on level 6, where it's like, the prisoners are, are supposed to be so bad that their crimes were erased. Which makes sense, because Crocodile's crime was erased. Like, he, he didn't do any, like, he was just arrested. A uh, smoke, or, well, no, I guess, um, no, they did. It's right, Smoker was the one who beat him, so that's what happened. So, people know about some of his crimes, at least. 
Um, so yeah, never mind. Um, so anyway, they reach level six, um, and we get a bit of a scene with everyone. Um, I already kind of talked about it earlier. Uh, did you have anything to say or add? Um, cause you did get, uh, Hancock slipping, uh, some information to Ace about Luffy. Um, no, yeah, cause you did kind of, you did basically talk about the, the stuff earlier. Yeah. Magalan, cause, well, another thing I noticed is that, like, because, like, he, he gets pushed in action in part because of, like, uh, you know, um, they're, you know, insulting Bo Hancock and she's supposed to be, you know, alluring and also Hannibal is even shitting on him, like, she's, oh, you're, you, look at them, they're out of control, you're a failure of a warden, because <laughs> holy shit, he's so mean, <laughs> uh, Hannibal, but it's like, you know, it's, I thought it was interesting that the, the leader of the prison is, you know, he's like, he's, he, he's apt to be controlled by other people in a way, like, pushed by them, you know, in small ways, so it's just a little thing, I don't know if there's anything, like, more to take from it than that, just something I noticed, um, because, I mean, he's still a government guy. He has to be controllable. That's the thing. The government is has to control their, you know, people. Like, that's the whole thing with Boa. She wants to be, wanted to be free. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, she slips some information to Ace while all the ca- havoc is going on. And so, um, oh, yeah, you might have noticed it from the SBS, but uh, the, the snails the, that are keeping watch, uh, their eyes. D- um, do, do, uh, did you remember from the SBS? Because they mentioned, um, it's, it's, it's a reference to Naruto, because they have the Rinnegan. <laughs> Oh no, I didn't even see that. I'm blind. Yeah, the whole yeah, because the whole thing was uh, pain, you know, pain could see through the, his six paths. So it's uh, like this is uh, Oda referencing that because I think Oda that was going on, uh, on around the same Kishimoto. time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it's it, it's cute, and especially because we've read through Naruto, so we both have that full context of that story. So it's neat. Um, but yeah, so because the the Denden Mushis can see, and and they you know that goes to the security thing. So yeah, of course it's the Rinnegan. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, does that mean they're descended from the Sage of Six Paths? The snails? Um, uh, do, do they have Hashirama's cells? <laughs> no, sorry, go on. It, it's kind of funny because, I mean... Well, no, I, I probably shouldn't mention this because this is a big spoiler, but, like, I was, I was like, browsing through Twitter and I saw something from, like, I guess it would have been a more recent chapter, and it was, like, something that Oda said in an interview, like, he saw from one of Kishimoto's uh, panels or whatever. Oh! Like, I know the I one you're talking. Ah, you, you did but get I, I don't know the context yeah. for it. Like I just happened to see it as I was browsing Twitter, and I was like, "Oh, okay, this will come up later." Oh, that okay. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna um I'm not gonna say, but specific to 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 work to talk about it. Like um basically um how Oda draw drew his invis Absalom and how his fruit worked. He took that like he was um he commented on Kishimoto drawing like invisible like characters using it, it, it that kind of I, from the war i think like i remember seeing it i think it was like a stone a ninja against like a stone wall in that same picture but yeah where it's like he's he liked how kishimoto drew his uh, invisible uh thing so he kind of used that with how absalom switches between um his uh you know invisibility or not so yeah um though the picture <laughs> that he did use something from later so uh but i won't say more um so anyway uh but yeah um Mr. Two comes in to save Luffy while disguising himself as Zoro, and Luffy like, oh, I was disappointed because you're not Zoro, but it's still Mr. Two. It's still Bon <laughs> Clay, yeah. Like, so, feel it. <laughs> I mean, of course, he wants to see Zoro more, but ah, oh, Mr. Two is such a good boy. <laughs> He's so nice. Like, they're just like, they hug. Like, they're just so glad to see each other. He's like, I thought you died that one time. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so anyway, um, I laughed because I was skipping ahead. And as they continue their breakout crew, we see the the legendary Minotaur. <laughs> this was one of the things he commented about. <laughs> yeah, because like, just... like, I like how Oda had been like giving small little buildups to certain things. Like, even when... Uh, yeah, we kept seeing the silhouette. Luffy, yeah. I was going to say, even when Luffy and, and Bone Clay meet up, there's like, oh, there's someone I want to see on level five. And that comes yes. back later. And so like with the Minotaur, you always get these, like, the, the thing in shadow, and he's got like this big club... <laughs> Uh, spiked bat thingy. The spike, and, and he's super intimidating. <laughs> and then, and then you see him in full glory, and he's got these stupid fucking eyes. <laughs> or actually, I think it's a she. I don't remember. Um, I forget, maybe it was stated somewhere, but the lashes make me think of she. So I don't know. I could be either. It just looks dopey, and it's great. <laughs> uh. And later we get even more weird animals uh, with like the Mino zebra who has these this flowing mane of ha- of like hair. <laughs> That's the best one. 
Um, I thought I thought it was just it was just fun to see like Oda's wacky takes on like these, takes on yes. Um, <laughs> what, what do you call them? Like mythical creatures or whatever? Because there was like it, a basilisk yeah. and other stuff that I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sphinx and. Yeah, like, um, well, yeah. It's great. Yeah, he's. It's because he, you're right. He is using, you know, the mythology here. Um, so, yeah, it's fun. Um, oh, and I have seen it pointed out, like, you know, obviously the whole place is a Dante's Inferno reference with the, the layers of. Like, he outright calls it hell. So, yeah. Um, I, didn't, I've, I probably didn't need to mention it because it's pretty clear, but I thought I'd throw it out there. Um, I was gonna say I don't know what that is, so I would not have known. <laughs> oh, oh, Dante's Inferno. It's I forget if it's a poem or a novel, but it's like basically a description of the layers of hell, and it's pretty like um. Oh, okay. it's it's like it's like a biblical thing. Um, it like or I don't remember if it's a ba- I think it's based on like it's it's old. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <coughs> so anyway, um, they keep going down. They get ready to go to level four, and I like how they meet up with uh you know everyone uh but because buggy and mr three split off but then they just end up back together and they all t- kind of well i especially love the one interaction where a buggy's like um hey remember hey luffy you remember my special buggy ball right that blew up the yes, whole town and, and luffy's like he's just like no <laughs> and, then it's and just buggy like... just makes the saddest face he's just like oh okay that's fine it's okay that you don't remember luffy <laughs> and i like how um well, well, Mr. Thieves and like, you must have a lot of confidence to put your name on it, and, well, yeah, but I made a mini version, the Muggy Ball, and it, Mr. Thieves like, so, so it's not named after you anymore, <laughs> so it's, and it act, it's actually still really strong, too, and they all, like, team up, and it's great, it's fun. <laughs> but then it blows up the floor, and Buggy and Mr. Three are still along for the ride. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I'm going even further into hell. <laughs> um... I I, just, I I like how that works out too because they're like okay we're ready for them we've got the stairs blocked they're already on the floor <laughs> what <laughs> oh man oh yeah we do get a brief glimpse of Mister One who unlike the others does not join up he's just he's just he's just doing his own thing <laughs> he's not goofy oh, enough not. to join up with this crew <laughs> exactly that's true and I don't think any like well he was pretty like the only one we really saw him interact with of the this group was Mister Two. And even then, they were they weren't on g- good terms. Like I think they even had a brief interaction later. Um, but yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. Now that the, the, they find out about the, the everyone landing, um, and a move move out to to capture them. And uh, so yeah, Megalyn just fucking drops like right in front of Luffy. Like I love that panel where he's he's just so uh, I like it, I think I think it's been a thing since like well obviously see since David and Goliath, but like. Fist of the North Star also used a lot too, and Lu- One Piece has done it so much. Like I think I even mentioned it before, but just like Luffy being the small one in front of this big dude, and so it's it's always really great when you see the fucking big guy. And I love that panel in particular because he just takes up so much of it and just boom, fucking Magellan. Holy shit! <laughs> uh, so yeah, did you have any thoughts about the the fight between um, Magellan and Luffy? Um. Cause- I mean, it was also it was also interesting that uh, Mister Two was there, and then he's like, "Well, I, I can't fight this guy, so I'm gonna run away." And then he ran away. Um, I mean, obviously there was more mm-hmm. to that later, but I don't know. Yes, and it's also kind of rough because Luffy just like, like he he tries he goes for the desperation again. He's like, "I'll sacrifice these arms to save Ace," and he just gets fucking wrecked. Like, like the fucking last page of him just fucking dre- buried buried in fucking poison like jesus christ um but so yeah one thing I'll, i want so anyway something because okay because last time i talked about like you know sort of running you know and from a fight and and or you know the will to fight sort of and i i don't want to comment on back on sabote quite yet but um i do think it's important that because what this arcs because I, I kind of f- f- um it's like i talked about it in using words maybe i should have been more careful with my wording because it's like my points or my ideas weren't wrong it's just i might have framed them weirdly because like what that arc sort of does is it has it had luffy running away from an encounter and that's being framed as like you know it, it's his failure everything goes wrong so what this arc kind of does it sort of it, it shows examples of encounters where it's quote unquote okay to run from so i think but it but starting off is what it what it, one thing i think is like i don't think luffy's wrong to fight because it it turns out okay in the end because it's just like like with Aokiji or whatever before because because he fought and got so wounded like you actually had this um it, it reminded me of Drum with Kareha where he's like you know take care of Mr. Two you know he's hurt and like Luffy is like way worse off 
in in this case and um but Ivankov you know and and that gets Ivankov's favor even before he he Ivan knows about like Luffy being related to you know or to or anyone special pretty much like I mean he was watching the whole time but you know he decides to help Luffy because of like who he is and the fact that he you know still you know, and yeah, so it's like because you know him fighting Magellan didn't turn out bad, so to speak, because it actually, it you know, it kind of worked out. But what also happens in this counter is Mister Two runs away. Like he he's like so. I think for like for Luffy, it, you know, it it it's, turns out to be a victory. But for Mister Two, it's like he has to make up for this, and he does later, like with uh, you know, not just saving Luffy. Like he because he failed here by running away, he had to fight like right after that. And, like, try and get Luffy back. Because he, he had to go through at level 5 and such. And then later on, he eventually sacrifices himself. But we'll get to that later. So, um, I just wanted to bring these this po- those points up on this this stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I was, um, was going to ask you how you felt about this because of what you had said before. Yes, because I, de- I definitely, like, cause I, even as I was reading I was like, hmm, maybe just phrasing it purely as, like, running wasn't the best idea. Because, like, what I meant more last time was, like, retreat and surrender. Like, the, the if Luffy's a man of action, then, you know, he should be judged on whether or not he takes action. And, you know, it, and so in that case, I, you know, well, I'll talk more specifically about Sabote later. But because it's also it's I, I do think it's consistent with like the rest of the series. Like I even talked to, talked about Akemi, whose name I was pronouncing wrong because I saw the English spelling and assumed it was Japanese. Like and I I read it through Japanese pronunciation. Yeah, I was gonna um, say when I had been reading it, that's not how I read it at first. But you said it, and I was like, oh, Baratie. So I, I don't know, maybe it's because uh. well, I think I think Baratie. Well, because that's how they pronounce it in the Funimation dub with Baratie. But with Kami, I'd always pronounce it Kami. But like, and then when reading it, I was like, "Wait a minute, maybe it's it's supposed to be spelled, you know, Japanese style." So it's it's kamie, because that's how I you would say it if you read it um, from Japanese syllabary. But then I checked the wiki, and no, it's kami. Like that, that's how it's spelled. It, like k a i m i. Like it's <laughs> or so or or something or no k e i. Sorry. But then um, I was also mispronouncing Rayle. Apparently, it's pronounced like more like Ray Lee. Um, which I don't like. I think it sounds gross. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to pronounce it Rayleigh still. Um, were, were, did you read it as Rayleigh or Rayleigh? I read it as which Rayleigh because I figured it had the, like, the E-I-G-H, and that just made me yeah, think, right. A. Yeah, exactly. So, English is yeah. weird. <laughs> English like, is fucking weird. <laughs> the way other languages we the same play thing. to it is weird. Why? <laughs> Right, so so we're we're pronouncing Rayleigh wrong, uh, but it sounds better this way. <laughs> no, I don't know. That, I'm kidding, but I don't. That's how. That, well, see, I say I'm kidding, but that, I do feel that way. But if you pronounce it the the other way, that's fine. It's just like this. This is how I've been pronouncing these names for so long. Like Kamie, or I, I I did it like that because it's like I thought I was wrong, but it turned out to have been right the whole time. So now it's Kami again but with Rayleigh. I was wrong, but I don't care. <laughs> Because it's, I, so, yeah, my bad. I'm probably pronouncing some of these names, too, because it's like, it's like, you've you, you've seen the Google Translate things where, they, oh, put uh, this phrase and it goes through it, Google Translate 60 times. How fun does it get, but, how much does it get butchered? Like, that's what's happening, is like, he's taking these Western terms, like, Magalon is like a thing, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong again, like, Hannibal, obviously, like, Hannibal Lecter or something, you know, so it's like, these are Western words. He's turning Japanese and they're getting turned back to English. And sometimes it's not that like reminds, one-to-one. That reminds me of the one time that I was watching uh, My Hero Academia. And um, the one character in it is named Ingenium. But, like, I was watching the Japanese, obviously. And so, like, they pronounced it, like, Ingenium or something. And yes, I was like, oh, they always... okay, I don't, I don't know that this is an English word. So that makes sense. I'm going to pronounce it this way. <laughs> and then everyone in my comment section was like, you fucking idiot. It's Ingenium. <laughs> So you pronounced it like the correct Japanese way, and they were calling out for being wrong, or which way, well, or yeah, how was well, it? Or... Because it was an English word, and so they're like, well, why aren't you pronouncing it correctly in English? And I didn't know it was an English word. <laughs> See, well, it's funny, because like, I remember Evangelion, they, like, they, 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 um, they're like the third, like, uh, Shinji's like the third chilled, like, because it's short for children, right? No, it's like... <laughs> Because it's supposed to be fucking child, obviously, <laughs> but no, he's the he's the chilled because it's short for children. Oh man, and, and energy is, is instead of energy, it's like energy, I think. So it's like same thing there, where they just like you know they mess up with the English words, and it's kind of funny to hear. Um, so yeah, it's, I understand. Like some people don't like English. Um, I honestly think it's like it's either funny or like adorable. Um, so I don't mind it personally. Um, so anyway, oh yeah, I love how, um, or were we done with Luffy and Magellan? 
or yeah yeah so uh moving on um i love how like mr three and mr um and buggy i almost called him like mr i was trying to like what, what number is buggy oh wait no he's not a mr buggy <laughs> <Road> works <laughs> mr Bu- buggy son um yeah he gets uh he, i like how they try to attack hannibal and he's like i would have just let you through <laughs> you know, fucking dumbass. Yeah, so like they they get defeated because they're like we're gonna escape. So being right, so right. in this and of case, like being proactive is like bad for them. Right. Well, Hannibal was willing to not fight, um, and you know, but they get do get saved by Mister Two later and all because he uh he tricks Hannibal and uh it all works out. Um, that w- that was a really cool reveal. Like when like somehow it didn't like somehow I didn't like notice the well, hint not beforehand. A- yeah, that he, it was uh, Mr. Two, all, or that uh, Hannibal, when Magellan came down, and it was uh, Hannibal, like, Mr. Two was pretending that, like, oh, Mr. Two fought his way through, but it was actually, he was Mr. Two. And it's also, <laughs> yeah, it's also yeah. kind of cool that, like, I didn't notice it at first, because, be- like, because I didn't notice it at first, I didn't notice the other little bit of, uh, not foreshadowing, but, like, the other little detail that comes up later, um, the other reveal. Mm-hmm. Ooh, excuse me. So yeah, it's like if I had good. like noticed a little hint at first, or even just like after seeing the reveal, gone back a couple pages and like look watch looked it over again, I might have noticed, but no. <laughs> Which was fine because it, I got shocked later when it happened. So that was cool. See, I guess what I had sort of sort of taken away from this little scene, um, I didn't know if the difference was like maybe like when Luffy and plus like this is a different character, so maybe the I don't. No, it seemed weird that, like, the similar sort of ideas wouldn't apply, but, like, um, like, when, I guess when, Lu- on Sabote, like, when Luffy was gonna, you know, retreat, um, it wasn't, like, retreat so we can come back later or something, like, like, with, uh... Well, yeah, that's kind of the thing, because, like, on Sabote, I, I was gonna not talk about it, but I guess I will since you're bringing it up, but it's, like... Because the, the goal, what was, like, because I guess, um, we'll, we'll see it later with, uh, when Luffy encounters a certain, uh, pirate, who we haven't mentioned yet, but, like, um, because on Sabote, like, Luffy's goal was to get to the New World, but as set up with, like, Devil Diaz, it's like, if you show desperation, you're not ready for the New World, and that's what happened when everything went wrong. Luffy showed desperation, he split up the crew, he freaked out, you know, he freaked out, and that, so he wasn't fit for the New World. So, you know, he, that was, and that was sort of his failure when, in his retreat, but it's like, you know, because Kizaru, Sentamaru, and the pacifistas, they were, you know, if he wanted to get to New World, he'd have to get, get surpass them somehow. But, like, here, it's like, you know, it's, particularly in the escape later, it's like, see, on the way down, yeah, he needed to surpass Magellan to, to, to save Ace. So, in fight trying to fight him, it turned out all right. Because he did go end up going lower down, and he got saved by Mr. Two and Ibankov. So, but on the way up, it's like... They don't miss, like they're running from him. So, like they're trying to get past him, basically. Where it's like b- b- stopping to beat him. Yeah, th- they might have been able to beat him if they all worked together. But that you know, that time was of the essence, sort of. Where it's like with Sabote, it was more, it was more the opposite, where they had like three days. So well, I, it wasn't like oh god, we got to beat him now. Like it was um or I was kind of thinking or, it more in like how not, that idea like, could apply to uh, Mister Two's actions because like in this instance, like. He runs away from he runs away from Magellan to like you know not fight, well because he knew that like if I if I fight this guy I will have a, a two hundred percent chance of losing or whatever. But like right right he well, doesn't you're gone, he gone. doesn't run away and like like he doesn't I guess like you said you said like desperation so like Luffy was trying to like retreat and whatnot but like with with Mister Two like he retreats but like he comes up with a. Like, he doesn't run away to run away. Like, he runs away to survive and come back later and kind of, like, finish the job, I guess. To like So, like, he doesn't give up on Luffy. He, like, comes up with a new plan and he, like, disguises himself as this person because deception is his thing. And, yeah. So, like... Yeah, well, because it's like... Yeah, him running away at first is, like, you know, that's his failure. But because he has to come back and make up for that failure, like, you know, afterwards. So, it's like... Yeah, and he's kind of their place there to reward Luffy for, you know, continuing to fight anyway. So it's definitely, it's yeah, it's definitely a little, like, um, what's the word? Not um, counterintuitive, I'd say. Because it's like, it, it's, a, you know, I, like, I think I've got it rationalized. It's just, like, explaining it can be hard because, yeah, well, because, like, again, with Mr. 2 and Mr. 3, they fight, but they're rewarded afterwards but by Mr. 2. They He saves he saves them. Um, and then, you know, like, uh, um, Kami and uh, Ansabodi when she charges uh, Duval, like Luffy was the one who saved her, 
You know, like she went to fight and Kobe with Alveda, like it's gone back to chapter two. So, you know, the, the same kind of thing. Um, well, and there's a very specific thing <laughs> I'll get to mention later um, because like all of like th- this arc really goes into that idea in a very specific way. So anyway, um, well, yeah, cause I guess we'll, now we'll that I'm looking that at this, this other page I have here, um, Mr. Two specifically says like, I ran away because if I hadn't, both of us would have been killed. So like, at that point, um, like, he already sort of, like, owes Luffy his life because, like, he would have died anyway. So, like, by running, he now has to go back. And, like, even if it means sacrificing his life to save Luffy, it, uh, I don't know. I, I, well, because it's, like, it's a together, very what-if kind of thing. Like, well, that's the thing about the whole idea is that, like, it, it's, like, it, that that mentality of, like, like, that's the thing is, like, there, and, okay, I'm just gonna say it, because I've been, like, putting it off because it's, like, so perfect, but basically what, um, later on, Ivankov's healing Luffy, and he says, you know, um, like, you know, it's all up to Luffy, like, Luffy, she, he started the healing, but, you know, Luffy has to endure it, and what Iva says is that, you know, miracles only happen to those who never give up, and that's kind of the whole thing, I think, that is the, the key to this, like, you know, fight over flight mentality, where it's, like, you know, if you have a goal and you work through it, you you work for it no matter even if it seems impossible like you know a miracle will happen like that's like a rule of this story so i think the you know the key there is like you know lo- like and you know miracles are that ki- like that's what ha- like because when luffy um what was i gonna say fuck i lost my train of thought um mr or mr what was i saying before i got i talked about that the miracles thing um luffy being healed mm. Well, that was build up to the miracles thing, but about like we were talking about this scene with Mister Two, um, because oh yeah, that's the defeatist mentality. Because he said that like uh, oh if I if I stayed and fought, we both would have died. But like who's who? He didn't stay and fight, so we don't know if that would be true or not. Because like again, Miss like Van Cup said, miracles happen when those you know can, if you continue if you never give up and continue to fight, like you know so. You know, God knows, like, would Mr. Two and Luffy be, like, th- that's the thing, like, think about Luffy for a second, like, he, um, fighting with Luchi, he, and Cypher Ball 9, he, he learned how to do the shave technique with Gear 2, like, fight, continuing to fight, he learned th- this new ability, like, because he never gives up, he always figures shit out, uh, and, w- and works through, you know, his obstacles, like, um, and that's the, that's the miracle, <laughs> so to speak, so, you know, I mean, like, especially, like, um, yeah, it's, and it, you know, it's that, we'll talk about that, especially in regards to the end of the arc. So, um, cause there's something I, I, I thought was interesting, um, about how the arc ended, but yeah, definitely, that's like definitely a pretty core idea to, you know, the, cause like I mentioned the irrationality thing from, um, someone who's now on my server, cause, um, he, he was, he had a follow-up comment where he was talking about how like, like, think about Kobe for a second. Like, he wants to, he's this weak, wimpy kid who wants to become an admiral. And it's like, that's something that, like, you look at him and it's like, yeah, that's never going to happen if you're being, like, logical and rational about it. But, like, no, he he's fighting for it. Now look, now look where he is at the end of Enya's lobby. He's, like, actually, like, st- way stronger. Like, he, he's fighting for it. He's not giving up for his, like, completely rational goal. Like, that's the, you know, and if he never gives up, then maybe a miracle will happen and he'll become a fucking admiral, like, the least likely character possible. And that's, you know, I think it's, there's a positive message there. Like, that's the message I was talking about last time in One Piece. So it's, it's neat. Um, like, again, it's a fictional story, but, like, and I, but I definitely think there's something to be said about not giving up, you know? Um, so, yeah. Anyway, maybe we should move on, because, uh, I, I'm also confusing myself, like, because we're jumping around so much. Um, so anyway, uh, Mr. Two, they go down to rescue Luffy, um, Mr. Three and Buggy split off, whereas Mr. Two has to go through the ice hell, and it ends up finding him. Um, did you have any thoughts about this moment, like, with, the uh, Mr. Two trying to save Luffy against the wolves and stuff? Well, I mean, I thought it was kind of cool, like, in the prison, where Luffy's like, I'm not gonna die, and then all the prisoners are like, yeah, but it doesn't matter if you're trying to save other people, you, you can't even save yourself, you, you, prison is all about, you know, being, looking out for number one, and then, like, Mr. Two shows up, and it's like, I'm here to save you, friend, yeah. and they, they can just, like, eat shit. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And then, that's... <laughs> but then th- this part well, yeah, with the wolves was also really cool, because, like, you know, Luffy's poisoned and, like, dying, and he still, like, gets up and is, like, helping Mr. Two fight off these wolves, and he's like, what do you think you're doing? And he's got that that, that big monstrous stare, and his hockey, I'd assume, yes. is, like, scare yes. him off. 
and putting some of them in the, uh, the, the they've got foaming mouths. I only just, this is the first time I noticed, but, like, some of them have foaming mouths. Like, the ones lying down around Mr. Two after he does that, after that big panel of all the wolves, like, freaking out. There's some of them with foaming mouths, and some did run away. So it's like, I only, I never noticed the ones with the foaming mouths before. <laughs> I, I don't know how many times I've read through this arc. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's hockey. Um... <laughs> But yeah, well, because, like, yeah, and th there's moments, like, th I love how you say eat shit to those pirates because, like, that's what's going on. It's like, you know, the, the Luffy didn't give up, so Mr. Two found him. You know, Mr. Two didn't give up, so Luffy saved him. Like, it's like, and, and so that also ties into, the, like, what the prisoner was saying, where it's like, yeah, prisoners got to look out for themselves, but, like, here they are mutually fighting for each other and not giving up, and they get noticed by the uh, Inazuma, the mysterious uh, guy who arrives to save them um, after the, the fighting. Um, so anyway, um, if that was all you had to say, uh, we can move on. So, <laughs> let's get on to a part of the manga I have been, uh, c very curious about your reaction to ever since, um, so, you, well, you, I don't think you've said so on the show yet, um, I mentioned it last time, like, offhandedly, but no, I, no, I, no one in the comments, like, said anything, like, no one's confused, but, um, you're transgender. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, I came out on Twitter, uh, on Twitter, so, like, not everybody knows, uh, a little while ago. Yes, that's why I wanted to point that out, yeah, because uh, we haven't directly addressed it here either. And I haven't addressed well, it, like, and... in a, a video on my main channel yet. So, like, not right, everybody right. knows. I, I've seen in the comments, like, some people are, are referring to me differently. Uh, some people just don't know, it seems. Yeah, see, and... It... <laughs> I remember when you told me, like, one of the things that clicked into place was back on Alabasta, you were being very, like, touchy about how to refer to Mr. Two, and <laughs> and then later you were like, oh, I'm transgender, I'm like, oh, <laughs> and so, well, even that's then, just one like, of the things. I don't, so. I don't just think me being transgender, like, like uh, yeah, I, I still want to be careful yeah, about no, that stuff sense, anyway. Right, 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 I, that's true, it's just like... That thing specifically made me think of that for some, or you, it made me think of that for some reason, so, <laughs> um... So, did you want to give overall thoughts, like, now, before we really get into the, the new comma? Because, um, all I have to say about sort of, like, well, I have, I'll have more to say, obviously, but, like, I don't know if you've seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, but, um, Oda basically saw Rocky Horror Picture Show, and he's like, I'm gonna put that in my manga, which is why Avon Cub is basically, like, a, a Tim Curry, <laughs> Dr. Frankenfurter. Like, if you look up Dr. Frankenfurter, it's, like, it's just the Ivan Cub with, like, actual human proportions. <laughs> um... And yeah, this place took a lot of it, the, the whole new level five point five new comma land took a lot of influence from that movie, I guess. Um, so he mentions that in I don't know if it's been in SBS currently or in this in this stretch of chapters or a later one. But I'm just like that's so I don't know exactly like how much perspective he has on you know um, transgender stuff. Yeah, I was but, gonna um, say this didn't aside from this that didn't feel like it really dug into any sort of like themes or anything on like how to. So like, it feels yeah. just more of more of like part of the world. Like it's just kind of an offhand thing that's there. Um, nothing about it's, it really. It, like, yeah, touches it's like on, like this is how these people would feel or whatever. Like how I mean, like you could say. Then again, like I guess if it's based off of something else, um, then maybe it wasn't intentional. But like, you know, the fact that everything's like underground and there are these people living in this like quote unquote paradise away from society. Um, like I feel like there's some sort of like metaphor you could take from that you know that like these people perhaps well because yeah yeah i mean and because that's the thing they now that you mention it they are like the leader like the well because um as we sanji is on the island that um ivan Cubs comes from is the, that he, uh i keep calling him he just because like, i guess most of the time he is a male um and he can change his gender though um but it's like yeah sanji's on that island and he's a queen and it's not a government aligned island because he's a revolutionary um, so it's like, there's definitely like, like, uh, this, I guess, if you want to take it like that, like, yeah, all the characters who we've seen that are like this are not part of the, the this horrible system that exists in this setting, so, um, but at the same time, I think Oda even says in, like, a way later, SBS is like, because someone asks about the whole, like, anti-authority message, and Oda's like, uh, don't attack police officers, kids, <laughs> like, he's basically saying, like, it's, it's a fictional story, like, don't, you know, he's not, he's not saying, like, go actually rebel against authority because you read a comic book, um, so... You know, the amount of, like, real-life stuff is, like, it, you know, you could take it from... It, I, I guess um, one thing I always want to specify when talking about, like, quote, author intent is, like, because um, in 
basically i guess the difference between like allegory and association because it's like just because he includes it in his manga doesn't mean he's trying to make like a real life allegory uh, you know that's that that could be just like a reader association like it, it all depends on like what the author is trying to do like um so yeah and the, um and again they're they're very exaggerated and i also like the fact that they're like actual characters like yeah they're very flamboyant but like like one thing i've always liked about evan Cove in particular is that like he's an ally and a positive force but as like a character he's very neutral like he's not like a good like a necessarily a great person like with even with luffy like uh, you know, he had to earn to respect, learn, uh, you know, he came to come to respect him first. So, um, and he's also kind of just, you know, he's just, he can just be rude and stuff. Like, he's not like a good guy outright. Like, I always felt like he's, he's pretty neutral. Like, he just kind of, um, you know, he has his loyalties, of course, like with the revolutionaries. But yeah, um... And I guess there's like he, their 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 freedom thing because they are free from gender because of his powers because he can uh, transform change everyone anyone's like with the <laughs> like uh, the guy who comes in to attack him he's like he's got these fucking cameo military pants and he's like this big buff dude with a bunch of scars and a beard he's like the picture of masculinity and I'm mean, kind just like eh, you're a girl now <laughs> I don't know that was maybe I the one kind of scene that I didn't care for a whole well, lot which again like okay, this is more fair. just like my interpretation um because obviously what's happening here is it's just like oda showing off this character's powers and like you know that that makes sense um but the way it plays out to me kind of and again like you would well i guess to sort of preface this you had told me after the show uh last week that you know some people consider i don't know if it's this part yeah. in particular but some people consider it to be transphobic um Certain things, yeah, Which yeah. I, I don't know. That wasn't the reading I really got oh, go from on. it, but I guess I can touch more on that later. Um, the only really part that I sort of like disliked about this scene, like if there was to be any sort of like potential transphobia or you know just sort of like weird, um, like a negative thing to be attached to it, I thought it was. I wasn't a big fan of how like this guy like goes up to like fight. Um, what's the name again? I don't remember his name. I thought. Ivankov? Yeah, Ivankov. Um, Ivankov? Or it, like, just, just the, the way it, like, that, that gender change was sort of, like, forced on him. It To me, it kind of reads as... And again, like, I don't think it's intentional or anything. It's just kind of a byproduct of how things played out. But to me, it kind of reads as, like, a like a gay or trans panic sort of thing. Like, oh, they're going to come for you next. Like, the way that this person is, like, oh, forcibly... Well, see, like, their, their yeah, I guess I can see where you might... <laughs> and I feel like, you know, to show off that I see, power I didn't think about it like and, that. like, as this character being a miracle worker, I think there was another way to maybe do that, uh, like, just to show that this is how this character's powers work. Uh, but then again, like, I understand it is an action story, so, like, to have this in a more, well, like, battle I sense, guess... it, it does... Like, again, like, I, th I think it's a minor and, thing, and, you know, I'm probably reading into it too well, much. Well, I think the other thing, well, because the issue, I like, or I guess, like, not that you're wrong to feel that way, but it's, like, my thing with it is that, like, he's not, like, a good, like, he's, at, like, the reason he's, he's trying to take vengeance for it because he's like, oh, you turned my, my, da my, my dad into a woman, but then it's, like, Ivan's just like your father wanted to be a woman. Yeah. Like he's acting, he's yeah, yeah, he's yeah, perceiving that's, that's it as whole, like this I bad guess, thing. Overarching perspective like, of it is that like these characters are, you know, they are the good guys in this sense. Like they are fighting. Like later they fight alongside Luffy, and like so even if like there there is a guy like this who kind of shows up and seems to be against the whole thing, um, yeah, like there is a, a there's enough of a reading against that sort of like this could be transphobic that I think it it's fine. Yeah, like, that's kind of my takeaway from it, because, like, he's in the wrong, That's and that's, like, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe I should evaluate my, like, thing, but I, I find, like, you know, I tend to, on some level, enjoy, like, the characters being, you know, even, in a, maybe in a non-consensual way, like, forced to explore, like, their gender, like, one of my favorite, um, arcs, story arcs in, um, The World God Only Knows, which is, like, a, a harem romance comedy thing, um, Though it does have some more serious arcs, but like there's one arc where the main character is body swapped into the girl he's trying to, you know, romance basically, and so like, and he like his whole thing is he plays a lot of like harem video games and stuff. So when he's body swapped into the girl, he starts playing like reverse harem video games, because <laughs> so I don't know. I just tend to like, and um, there's a later arc where um, they go on a date, except they're both uh, cross dressing. So I don't know. For some reason, I like tend to and like find stuff like that enjoyable. I'm not sure what that says about me, and I haven't thought about it or read a lot of stuff like that. So it's like you know. So, so for me, like that's why I mentioned it earlier. Like I seeing this like picture of masculinity be like ashamed of being a girl. It's like you know. And again, he's like wrong, like in the wrong, or or he's portrayed as in the wrong. So I just think it's like 
I don't know. I kind of thought it was fun. Well, well um, yeah, and like, there's yeah. there's not whole like there's not a whole lot to actually read into that scene. I don't think because like it's not like that character is a recurring. As far as I'm aware, they don't come back. So it's like it's not uh, like there's a scene afterwards never... <laughs> that like really cements that like this is what was kind of being gone for here. Right, right. Like I said, I think it's just you know like well because I guess yeah I, I was doing it like you know non consensual like he's turning uh, that person into a woman without like his consent but um you know but he also does like he changes his own gender and other characters genders because he's supposed to be miracle worker so i don't know um it is yeah i I, it's uh, uh, see i don't have a lot of experience with like reading like if i were um uh yeah like i'd I'd want to read more about queer queer and feminist theory in general before like outright talking about it in fact we've probably gone on to it so long that we're probably going to get a few dislikes i'm sorry but it's like it's relevant (laughs) so (laughs) um yeah like, I guess to sort of draw a comparison to something else that people have said, like, is... Uh, spoilers for Yu Yu Hakusho a bit, but I kind of want to... I mean, we'll probably discuss that scene when we get to Yu Yu Hakusho, but yeah, that's not going to uh, be for a yeah, while. Yeah, we, well, we already talked... And we already talked about it uh, last... Uh, after the recording last week, so go on. Yeah. Because uh, um, it's also interesting. So, like, if we want to talk about something that could potentially be read as transphobic, even like, even the scene in Yu Yu Hakusho, I don't think... I don't read as transphobic, but I do think it's not as um yeah I've, you've described not it to not me. as accepting um, as it could be but basically like it's not yeah it's not sensitive enough towards the issue yeah so yeah. like yusuke um, fights on. a character who is presenting as female but he like gropes the character and is like oh it turns out you know this is actually a man and he's like he, he's basically like you know if you want to be whatever you want to be then like you should not do it half-assed like you should go through or whatever and so like it's almost like for for that particular scene in Yu Yu Hakusho, it kind of reads as like, you know, if you are a transgender or whatever, like you can be what you want to be, but you like, like I will accept you for who you want to be, but only if you like fit into these particular conform to this exactly this this specific idea of what one or the other is. It's like and which is kind of ignorant of the whole like gender as a spectrum thing. And we we talked about it last time, but it's like it's kind of like see well the issue with I think calling things transphobic is just like I mean I've you know I've seen actual like really sexist and transphobic things, but it's like I I like I wouldn't assume the author uh, you know something of the author just because I read a work of theirs and they clumsily handled something like i don't think the author of your line april supports abuse because they he fucked it up in his manga like yeah like i wouldn't say your line april supports abuse i don't think it handles the topic very well at all but like that doesn't you know reflect on the author necessarily with unless i read an interview it's like oh yeah i abuse my kids all like no that's not gonna fucking happen like so it's like yeah assuming something is transphobic or the author is transphobic just from their manga like eh, i'm not sure about that um so that's that's my because like so yeah it's like with that issue it's like yeah i wouldn't say toga especially with how he handled aluka and hunter hunter which i think is um better for sure um than what i've heard of the yu yu hawk show instance so um, but then yeah i guess the last sort of thing i have to say on this like this part of the one piece world is like in in this particular setting like there are like there are got there are like feminine girls, there are masculine guys, there are drag queens. So like there's a, there's a whole bunch of like characters here. So it's not like it doesn't really conform to any one particular idea. So like yeah, now that you mention it, like because I just mentioned the the gender spectrum, and here we have a lot of characters on varying points of that spectrum. So yeah, um, now that you mention it, um, huh? So basically, I no, like I that. don't see this as transphobic. Um, well, I guess one potential, like, cause like later on we do see the, start seeing the strat cover stories and we see Sanji because like, uh, like, well, cause he gets forced to wear a dress and you know, he's being stalked by all the, uh, you know, the maidens of the new comma land. And like, I guess my stance on that is like, I want to point out that like no one else has an issue with these characters except Sanji, but Sanji also has an issue against unattractive, you know, like Kokoro. He was not, a, so it's like, it's purely at Sanji's expense is I guess my thing. And it's like meant to be funny, I suppose. Uh, like, like again, I wouldn't uh, read it as like, oh, oh, they're forcing this on us. Like, it's only Sanji who gets that. So I don't know. Um, but we, we uh, yeah, and I know. Like, even the little going. subhead, yeah, like the little subheading for that cover arc was like, you know, it said was like one of the girls or whatever. So like, I don't know. I was fine with that too, even if it was like exaggerated in okay. the typical Oda way, which you know. But yeah, that's that's my take right. on this well, whole yeah. thing. 
because I guess one more point I had to say is because I well I, I was mentally compared because I had someone talk to me privately on Discord and they mentioned apparently there's uh, some comments about uh, from the uh, Japanese side of things um, where like apparently like uh, I, t- I think I mentioned this to you last time where like the issue is like oh yeah this is going to be like some kids only you know perspective on you know anything like resembling this you know LGBT stuff is like these goofy exaggerated characters which can give them wrong, the wrong idea and I also had a similar connection to um the Simpsons, specifically, there was a documentary, like, a year or two ago, like, the problem with Apu, who's, like, an Indian character, and, like, the thing is, like, if you, of course, if you actually, like, watch The Simpsons or read One Piece, it's, like, yeah, Simpsons makes fun of, fun of every, like, minority and character, and, you know, type of, because it's supposed to be, like, American life, and the One Piece exaggerates the hell out of everything, so it's, like, the issue with, and, like, I don't know if this was part of the documentary or a criticism of it, but, like, the thing with Apu is, like, because he was, like, such a popular Indian character, a lot of Indian Americans, like, you know, were, you know, like, ah, that, like, haha, look, Apu, and, or that people would, like, see, the, you know, because that was the only, like, connection to, like, India that they, the, uh, the average person might have is just The Simpsons, because it's a popular work of fiction, and it happens to have this one character. So it's like, for both, it's like, I don't think the problem is necessarily with The Simpsons or One Piece, it's that there's no other representation in the media. Like, like, as I don't think there's really, because ne- apparently, like, Apu's, like, actually, like, a good and well rounded character in the show and like Ivanka's like they're they're you know again they're like they happen to be you know of these gender things but they're also like good characters like Mr. Two has a great moment at the end of this arc and everyone cries and it's good <laughs> so it's like it's not like they're stereotypes or you know anything but like yeah the, it's not their fault for being the only one to try and represent these groups in any way like not that they're necessarily trying like I'd say Simpsons is a little closer because it, it's a parody but it's still more grounded than One Piece which is like this fucking goofy fantasy epic but yeah, so I guess that's my last uh, point I wanted to say. <laughs> so we can move on to this and to the rest of the manga if you're ready, or, or unless you had something to add to what I just said. I mean, I don't know. I thought this was an interesting discussion. I thought it was interesting that One Piece like even no, has yeah. this I'm in just... there. <laughs> Yeah, I also think it's interesting, but, like, the thing with politics is that people don't want to deal with it. Like, I think, I even mentioned it last time, where I think people even go to anime because they don't want to deal with, like, American politics. Who wants to fucking deal with American politics on purpose, right? And so, and here we are talking about (laughs) political issues through a Japanese manga. So, yeah, I I guess I'm just conscious of annoying people, but, like, yeah, I agree, it's interesting, you know, so, I don't know. But you're, what you're going to say? Well, yeah, because, I mean, Japanese media has politics, too. And, like, th- some people yeah, think that, like, just... oh, there's, we're not going to find any of this in, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, we were even talking, because Zombieland Saga had a whole thing. Um, Hugto Precure may or may not have had a whole thing. Um, so it's, like, it's still happening in Japanese media, too. Like, so you're, you, it's, like, eh. I, I guess I understand, like, because I also don't care for politics. But, um... Yeah, but my thing is that, like, I'm not just super well-read on, like, certain political theory or whatever, so that's why I normally don't talk about it. I don't know, whenever I think of, like, the current state of American politics, I just get depressed, so I just try not to think about it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So anyway, uh, back to One Piece, because I'm pretty sure we were talking about that at some point. Um, So yeah, um, back in Emple Down, um, Mr. Two finds out what happens. Um, You know, Luffy wanted him helped um so ivan cub just chose to help luffy and do the healing he get he drops the line about how you know miracles only come to those who fight which is super important um and yeah so I, and uh just you know but more well we learn about uh shiryu and ivan cub drops name drops a bunch of level six prisoners i thought it was kind of funny how uh, i i I missed it like i'm i'm a little behind because you already kind of went over this but i thought it was kind of funny how ivan cub was like Oh well, we're outlaws. We don't normally just automatically save people. But that, but then I saw Luffy, yeah. and it was like, well, I'd have to be heartless not to. <laughs> right. Well, because he's very similar. Even the Strats are kind of like that. Because like, remember back when they were like debating on whether they should save Kami or Hachi? Because it's like, well, Hachi did you know wrong us in the past. So it's like, yeah, I've always kind of like because they're they're not heroes. They don't jump into things you know randomly. And of course, Kid even said it before. But like, the villains of the world are still better than the, than the fucking <laughs> the heavenly dragons and shit so yeah it's it's fun it's neat it's neat how it's like you know how or what sort i'm like i don't i can't think of a word um but anyway um so anyway um mr two cheers in support of luffy and of course and luffy ends up like healing earlier <laughs> because of that um 
as Iva suggests. The power of friendship. <laughs> Yay! Like it's 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 real. <laughs> I also like the like the bit of war. Well, not world building. I don't know what I'm saying at this point. But like how they were <laughs> like they were slowly kind of like stealing things away from the. Oh like, yeah, like how they existed in the prison. Like they took trash and, and like the they would even take like the and... transponder snails and whatnot. So like they had like cameras, like they could see what was going on in the prison and all this, all this cool stuff. Taking food, taking clothes. It was, it was just interesting that like yeah. here's this big prison that like no one, like one person in like the history of forever has escaped, and like here are these people just kind of existing in the prison. Yeah, they just live there. And he, I've, even, I've even said, I don't, even, I don't know how to, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Like, is it Eva or Iva? I'm just going to kind of swap between the two. But, like, he's like, um, well, because he has a plan. He's gonna, Whenever uh, Dragon mobilizes, uh, he's going to he's gonna go. And Louis's like, oh, yeah, you mean my dad. And he's like, that's right. When your dad mobilizes Wait, his army. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Well, see. <laughs> and it's pretty interesting also because um, Kuma, back at the end of Thriller Bark, he knows the connection, but this like revolutionary commander does it. So it does not. So it's like, what the fuck, Kuma? You're too smart. How do you know things? Stop that. Well, yeah, because like this Kuma was so even, like weird. Wasn't wasn't Ivankov described as like uh, dragons, like you know, second in command or whatever? One of his biggest or, subordinates. One, one his yeah, biggest like. Subordinates. So and Kuma somehow knows something that he does not. Like he, well, because and I love how he like pieces it together where Luffy just like casually mentions things and. He was like, hey, yeah, you, like, this sounds exactly like, like, huh, the fact that Luffy doesn't, didn't even know that, um, you know, he barely knows anything about him. It's like, that, yeah, of course, that that's more believable than him knowing everything about Dragon and pretending, because, yeah, it's like, and it, it was neat to, to see how he, like, pieces it together. And, of course, he's like, oh, shit, we gotta save Ace now. Um, did, did the government, what, what, why was the government trying to attack Whitebeard and Dragon at the same time? What the fuck? Oh, man, I love how that just mobilizes him, um. And they all they, they they charge out, and everyone's like, "What the fuck's going on?" And the Hamble Down crew is just is not is not ready for this shit. <laughs> I love oh, how man. all the like just how all the chaos breaks out, and then it's like, "What? Well, we need reinforcements on level four. We need reinforcements on level two. The prisoners are rioting. It's just like, what? What's going on?" And then, <laughs> well, because this this factors into that because <laughs> uh, so we get a we get another arrival. Um, who attacks the the entrance? Um, fucking Blackbeard. Uh, <laughs> did I hope you had a good reaction to that? I did, and I knew it was coming. Um, oh, because I love seeing Blackbeard. He's like one of my most anticipated characters. So of course I like seeing more and of him. Plus, Ugh, plus it's like you never, you don't, you like we still don't really know what's going on with this guy. Because he's like, oh, I wanted to become a warlord of the sea, and then here he is like directly acting against the government, and it's like he's like throwing away his title of warlord. Uh, maybe not, maybe not completely, <laughs> but it kind of seems yeah. like he is yeah. like you know the the warden was like, hey, well, you're basically doing this, or well even the. Because he doesn't like directly like try to help anyone escape or anything, so it's like, has he? What is he doing? Well, because he does. I think. Well, because Bo Hancock made it in here, and she's a warlord, so I think he wanted that status so he could get into Emble yeah. Down. But shit was going bad, so it's like, yeah, you know, he. So yeah, he wanted to get into Emble Down for some reason, though we still don't know why. Um, but yeah, it's just like, oh, it's such a great. Well, because it's like with like Crocodile. And Jinbei, and you know everyone, like most of the other characters you see, it's like, or even Ivankov. I I can't pronounce that name for shit. Ivankov. Um, like Mister Two mentions him like on their way down, so it's like everyone else. There's a little bit of build up, but with Blackbeard, it's like Sengoku. Blackbeard's gone, and then what? And then oh shit, Blackbeard's that's Anvil Town. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it just happens out of fucking nowhere, and it's just oh, it's so good. I mean, One Piece arcs oh, generally man. have a lot going on in them, but like this this one as well, like. You've got, like, we get introduced to Jinbei, and then, like, Blackbeard just kind of shows up out of nowhere, and there's this other character who gets introduced, who, at first, I was like, well, why did Oda put this character here? Like, he hasn't really done anything this arc, and he doesn't seem like he's gonna, oh. Oh, Shiryu? Or, um, whichever, the, whichever or is that one, who you're talking about? Maybe, yeah, I think it was Shiryu. The former, war the former yes. warden of Empel Town? Yeah, the one who used to work. Yes, that's 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 Shiryu. Yes, he was uh, 
formerly the warden, but he killed too many prisoners randomly, so he got uh, imprisoned, and now, and then, yeah, he uh, got gets freed to deal with Blackbeard, and he, uh, he doesn't. He does not deal with Blackbeard. He does the opposite, in fact. I can't wait to see Luffy <laughs> Mother- versus Blackbeard and Zoro versus Shiryu. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's got a sword. Obviously, he's gonna fight Zoro. <laughs> uh... God. So anyway, yeah, they get to level six. Ace is gone, um, but they they do free a couple a couple a couple guys. They the Jinbe uh, can help, and so can a uh, oh crocodile. <laughs> um, I, I like how like Luffy with Buggy, he's like oh it's Buggy, but with Crocodile he's like f- he actually like gets mad. He Crocodile <laughs> he gets mad. Like Crocodile left way more of an impression on him than Buggy did clearly, which makes sense. Like because I also like how like back on um. You know, Amazon Lily, when he finds out that Boa's um, a warlord, and at the end of this arc, too, when he finds out about Jinbei, he's, like, he freaks out, because he's like, oh, shit, he's a, you're a warlord, that means you're really strong. So it's like, after fighting, like, Crocodile and uh, Moria and Kuma, he's, like, recognizes the warlords as, like, strong. Like, because normally he doesn't do that. It's like, he's normally, he's like, he'll treat you as strong as he sees you, but, like, now that he's been, uh, so, so many times the warlords have been strong, he recognizes that title as, like, a, a real deal. So it's kind of neat to see him have that reaction. Um, so, because normally he doesn't have pretensions. He's like, like he, like he doesn't care about the heavenly dragons. They're just, they're just dudes with titles. So he'll punch one, and they're a weak guy. But no, the warlords, no, they're they're strong. He's at he's had enough t- chances to find the hounds. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so yeah, we got the uh, so we, we we got the break in crew with Bro- with most of Brogue works, and now we have the break out crew with uh, Jin, Bay, Crocodile, and Ivankov. So. This um, is another yeah, uh, another little detail that I just like with Oda paying attention to the or maybe I don't I don't know it's it literally means nothing really but it's just I like how characters like some characters are like oh we have two warlords with us because like Crocodile obviously was a former <laughs> warlord but like he's he's also a former warlord so like he's no longer that but it kind of seems like like s- some characters recognize that he once was or maybe they don't even know that he's no longer a warlord but like I don't know some characters are like. I don't, I don't know, just his current status and his former status, the way they're, like, some characters... I don't know, it's just interesting. Yeah, well, that's... Also, I also really like seeing Crocodile again, because, like, he pulls his weight, even though Luffy beat him, like, 400... Like, two, three, three, four hundred chapters ago, like, he's still this really strong character. Like, I love the part where they're fighting, and they the, the, the other three Amino uh, guards come in, and Jinbei and Luffy and Crocodile just fucking own them. <laughs> like, they just fucking pu- force their way through, and it's fucking yes. awesome. <laughs> Oh man, like Crocodile is just he he's yeah he's still a big deal even though he was a defeated antagonist and I think that's cool. Um, yeah, I guess that's what's also really cool about this arc is that most of the characters who are showing up and who are part of this escape crew were like all former antagonists like Buggy, Mister Three, Mister Two, yeah. and then you got Crocodile. Crocodile, of course, yeah. So it's 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 we're seeing them all again. Yeah, it's cool. Because, like, I mean, Oda keeps, like, reminding us of their powers because, like, you know, there are people who just pick up the series wherever it's going and just, like, keep reading so they don't necessarily... Like, I think even talks about in the SBS how, like, they have a website to with, uh, like, plot synopsis for older material because, like, he can't expect children to buy 80 volumes or at this point more like 50 to catch up, you know? And, you know, reruns, like, how often can you catch the anime? Like, it's it's not easy for, you know, a young kid who doesn't know how to pirate things. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm firing shots. You know, are you kidding? Matt? I have downloaded vol- volumes too. So, and I pirate, I w- read the chapters before they come out, like, officially on, mo- on Monday. So, like, everyone. So, yeah, but it's like, yeah, it's... Um, so it's a big story with a lot of moving parts. Like that's what's kind of cool about the Blackbeard thing because it's like you don't expect it at all because there's zero buildup to it to him being at Ample Down specifically. But when it happens, you're like, oh shit, <laughs> you know, and it, like he's been being a sneaky kind of planning boy for like the whole time. So it kind of makes sense. And then of course, you know, he's a warlord. So I think he even mentions that as he comes in, he's like, hey, don't bother me. I'm a warlord. I can, I'm allowed here. I'm with the government. <laughs> but it doesn't work. He starts to fight his way in. <laughs> and oh man. So yeah, um, everyone's moving into action for the climax. It's really cool. Um, everyone's got their powers. Like, I, I, I think his power is so weird. Like, he's got the hormone fruit, so he could just do crazy shit with it. Like, okay, cool. Well, I, I like the part where, like, Luffy is basically dead after having that, you know, having to fight his way through the, the yes. big ordeal. And then he's just like, here's a shot of adrenaline. The healing. Go. And then... <laughs> 
And Mr. Two gets a two and he's like spinning out of control and his face is like, like the, there's the one page of all the characters like forcing their way through and Mr. Two's eyes are bulging out. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's good. Oh, man. So, yeah, moving on, they force their way up to level four. So, yeah, what, what, so, um, now we get to, uh, okay, see, I love how, like, Hannibal's been this big fucking goofball this whole arc, but then he faces down Luffy, and he gets a really awesome moment. Um, I don't what did you think about Hannibal, like, step, standing in front of Luffy and, say, you know, like, point, like, his little speech on how, you know, the prison is there to keep, you know, bad people in, uh, you know, under chains, and Luffy is freeing them, and, yeah, that's, you know, for that's, his own, like, I guess the main thing that, makes this arc really interesting is that Luffy is like, like this group is freeing a bunch of like really dangerous criminals. Like the one guy is here. You like, he's yeah, a yeah. pretty bad dude. And now he's, well, they didn't, yeah, they didn't free him, but it's like, there are other bad dudes in this prison. Like you can expect like a lot of these does have, have, have done various crimes of like stealing assault, you know, destruction property, like horrible, you know, da- down bad shit, you know, and they're getting like, especially on like the level five where these car- guys have bounties over a hundred million. Like that's a, pretty decent and, deal and i think i've just freed a bunch of them like, so yeah, it's like there, there yeah. is also something to be said about like the prison also being a you know a form of the you know the corrupt government and how like you know some characters yeah, so like, not like, every... a, like ace or yeah, jinbei yeah. who you know we're supposed to be like rooting for or, or someone like jinbei who's like trying to do the right thing by going against the government um so like there is some good being done here, and also some bad, maybe a lot of bad. Because I mean, now like, like yeah, even like, even if it yeah, wasn't yeah. like Luffy directly, who like I-, I keep thinking back to Shiryu because here's a guy who was there, and like if Luffy hadn't shown up, he would have still been in that prison. But now like because Luffy was there, yeah. like now Blackbeard has this like big <sighs> this strong as subordinate now yeah like that's the thing is like blackbeard's pl- like whatever blackbeard's doing it worked better because of luffy so it's like and like the whole reason luffy is doing this is purely because of his selfishness he wants to save ace so he'll do whatever he can within this prison to you know save ace and even if that means freeing prisoners like this is not like most people would not call this morally good like it's <laughs> and so it's like luffy being incredible like this is probably like like, this is, like, compare this to, like, the Skypiea stealing the gold thing, where it's like that, he was stealing gold from inside of a snake. Like, it was still, it was stealing technically, but no one was going to miss it inside of a, an animal's stomach. But, like, this is, like, no, this is having actual effect. This, is, you know, has actual risks on the setting, and Hannibal points that out to Luffy. Like, decent people live in peace because of Impel Down, and Luffy's compromising that. So, well, what I kind of like is that, like, both of them are correct, so it's like, like, Luffy's not wrong to do what he does, and Hannibal's not wrong to have the way he feels. So they're, they're, like, even. Like, I especially like, because, like, yeah, Luffy's stronger than Hannibal, but he has that same resilience. He just keeps getting up, just like Luffy does so often. Um, and so how the fight ends is really interesting, because Blackbeard comes in, and what he says is, like, you know, justice doesn't matter. Like, justice and evil, it doesn't, none of it, it's all, you know, no matter where you go in this world, you're not going to find the answer as to what it is. Like, it's just in perspective. So he's, like, he says Hannibal's ideals don't matter, so he just destroys him, pretty much. So, ugh, it's rough. Because <laughs> Hannibal, like, he's a good boy, he's ambitious, and he, he wants, um, you know, he, he he's resilient. Like, I don't know, Hannibal's good. Um, oh man. So, like, in this instance, we almost kind of get like, it's not a Luffy versus Luffy fight, but in a sense, like, it it sort of is. Like, similar ideals. Uh, yeah, ha- Hannibal. Well, or not, not, not ideals, Similar but resilience like, and, you know, will to, to stick to yeah. their ideals, yeah. Yes. Um, and that's what... It, and because, again, like like Blackbeard says, they're, like, or I guess... Well, neither of them are really wrong, but Blackbeard says, like, it doesn't matter, you know, so... And so he's able to sort of surpass Hannibal in particular. And then <laughs> we get the, the face-off. I love this page. Between uh, <laughs> Luffy and Blackbeard, where Luffy finally realizes that the the weird man on Jaya <laughs> was Blackbeard the whole time. Um, did you have any thoughts on Luffy and Blackbeard's first encounter? Because they, they do fight for a bit. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, like, I, I don't know. This is just really interesting because, like, before... Like, we find out that Blackbeard, like, the, because before we know that Blackbeard was going after Luffy when they were trying to get to Skypea. And so it's like, oh, now yes. that Blackbeard's here, is are we going to get a big showdown with Blackbeard and Luffy? And is all is all of Luffy's work going to go up in smoke because of Blackbeard randomly showing up? Um, but no, like now, 
he he only wanted a big bounty to kind of like get on the on the marines good side and become a warlord and so yeah. like he got that with ace and so now huh and then plus like luffy luffy right. wants to fight yeah. blackbeard he's like you put ace in prison but jim is like you know fighting blackbeard here isn't gonna save ace like we, we still got to get moving so like this it's a, it's a, it's a really good showdown because like it's it, we have perfectly good reason perfectly valid reasons to like put this fight like on hold like a, a for them like to there not, are yeah there yes. are good reasons to like not have this happen here like you know sometimes characters will have a fight and then like it'll just kind of stop and get put on hold for a while and it's not maybe it's not always like the most well um yeah like the, the reason for why it gets put on hold may, might not be the greatest but like in this instance like uh it's 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 like a big hint of things to come but uh <laughs> Yeah, well, because, like, or, or were you done, or... Yeah, I'm, I'm basically just fumbling now. Yeah, because, well, uh, you know, it, it's neat, well, because I like seeing, like, like Luffy hits Blackbeard, and he's like, ow, that hurt, because it's Blackbeard, he he seems to, he, he, I don't know if he's, act, like, well, he's even bleeding, too. <laughs> I don't know, it's just neat to see uh, Luffy, Luffy hitting Blackbeard. Well, again, I, <laughs> and I, I, seeing, now like, you mentioned that about Blackbeard, too, that, again, kind of puts into perspective what I had sort of said about uh, uh, Magalyn earlier, was that, like, He's a guy who looks pretty serious. When you have like Blackbeard, who's one of the biggest threats in the series, and he he has moments to be goofy like this, like "ow, that hurt." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right. But um, but anyway, one other thing I took from this uh, this whole conflict is like sort of like I guess what I'm also trying to say earlier was earlier with the Sabote stuff is like what is the fight that the characters are fighting and like you know because it's like because there are like back to looking back to shanks and bellamy it's like they're not fought at first you know shanks sort of like just lets uh higuma do whatever he wants uh bellamy you know luffy lets what do it because it's like there's no reason to fight you know like higuma like what what um he's just like he wants alcohol like fighting isn't gonna make more alcohol like shanks even gave him what he wanted and then with bellamy it's like the whole thing was like does the sky island exist it's like luffy beating bellamy doesn't magically make the sky island exist it doesn't matter so like looking at here it's like Luffy's goal is to save Ace, and as Jinbei points out, like, beating Blackbeard isn't going to do anything, you know? And with Blackbeard, he has some other goal in mind, so it's like, neither of them really want to fight each other. Like, it's not the biggest issue. Like, it's not what they're really fighting for right now. So it's like, there's no... Re so, you know, Luffy is the man of action, so if he wants to save Ace, his best course of action is to move on. And so that's what, sort of what Jinbei impresses on him. And of course, and the thing about Blackbeard that's fucking scary is that how, like, he agrees with certain ideas because he like even says it's like like he um he comments on luffy chasing after ace and he's like hey i'm not you might actually be able to manage it you know who i don't know um so it's like he kind of agrees with ivan cub's whole ideal of like miracles he just calls it he he files it under fate though because they keep talking about like fate and stuff so i think it's just kind of interesting how he like kind of agrees he's like yeah go for ace you might be able to do it you know like he he's giving luffy support yeah he's, he's not <laughs> even the, though he's the, he's he... not like the stereotypical oh you can't do this because i'm a villain bad guy you'll never be able to do that exactly he's like kind of he kind of agrees with luffy and it's like ugh, it's because scary literally just because it's blackbeard like you don't want to say that like oh yeah luffy is a lot like this bad guy and uh, uh, <laughs> fucking blackbeard man oh i, I really like blackbeard <laughs> oh man because even says like you know skyland exists so does the one piece it's like you know you got to keep fighting for that kind of stuff and you know it's uh it's, it's just weird to see blackbeard agreeing with the good guys or the the protagonists so yeah um but he kind of did that even back on jaya when we didn't know he was a he was a bad guy so yeah um the the that moment of the you know people's dreams don't ever end so yeah Ooh. so anyway the chaos continues um Blackbeard runs into Magellan and gets fucking wrecked <laughs> by the poison. I'm like, Magellan's like, oh, yeah, I don't even have time for you guys. But they do get saved. Yeah, I um, thought that was kind of interesting because I was like, oh, surely Blackbeard can use his powers to, like, shake off the poison or whatever. But no, he just gets poisoned and just, like, flops on the floor and it's just, like, dead. <laughs> they all get dead. Like, he just wipes out fucking Blackbeard's whole crew in one attack. <laughs> Like, well, because uh, I love that it happens later with uh, Mr. Three. I just really love how Devil Fruit powers work and, and just like power play in general. I really yeah, like because like you get and Mr. So, like, three who was like such a scrub back in the Baroque Works arc. And then like, <laughs> yeah, here the, he's going head to head. Even this with arc, he's the big 
fucking his power just per perfectly blocks Megalon, and it's so great. It's such a great moment. Like Mister, like Crocodile is even like, hey, you never know how powers will work against each other. And like even before he was like, Mister Three, what are what's a weak piece of shit like you doing here? But now he's like, huh, interesting. That worked. Like, ah, uh, it's just so great because it's like, yeah, Mister Three is this weak piece of shit who barely has done anything. Like he's kind of done some support, and he mostly on level two and three. But like, you know, obviously, because his stuff melts, <laughs> so it was harder for him to do anything. But then here he is stopping Magellan, who fucking who's this force of nature who just fucking wrecks through Ivankov and um, Inazuma, and you know he beat Luffy earlier. But no, Mister Three just stops him fucking dead, and it's awesome. <laughs> oh man! And so you kind of get that also with the uh, Blackbeard because Magellan just his powers are really poison is really tough, you know, to deal with because uh, not everyone just has a magical immunity to it. So he's strong, uh, and it's cool. But yeah, and I guess, like, the sort of, like, you know, taking action thing is, like, it kind of, like, feeds in the end. Because it's, like, they don't need to beat Magellan to, to leave. So it's, like, yeah, they're running, but it's not a fight worth fighting, so to speak. So, um, and th there's also more to, more to it because it's not like it goes perfectly either. But, um, but yeah, they keep fighting their way out. Um, did you have anything to mention about the that part of the escape or shall I move on? I guess not specifically, but I do think it is sort of interesting how just for this entire like escape plot, like the, the action is like segmented into usually there's like a couple different groups. So there's things going on like earlier, yeah. uh, you had like the, the escape on floor two. And then like, you know, obviously the warden shows up. So like, it's like, Oh, they're going to escape. Oh no, the warden's here. So then they can't. And then like, so there's, like, going up and yeah. down floors, like, characters are moving around, and sometimes they have to, like, backtrack to get back to... Because it's just so chaotic. Yeah. Um, and I actually never thought about it, but it also really works because, like, we know exactly where the levels are and what they're like and, rele like, where they are rele re relevant to each other, related to each other. Because, like, we went through the prison already. You know, we saw Luffy go through every uh, every level. Like, 1 through 5, then 5.5, and then level 6. So it's, like, we have the geography of the place mapped out. So it's, like, when we're jumping between levels, it, it works because we already know where everything is. And it's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, anyway, moving on. Um, they get... They reach the doors, but... Uh, they're they're stuck because they ordered the ships away, so Jinbei takes a fucking door and proceeds to outmaneuver several Marine battleships with a door. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love how like Jinbei was like fighting on par with like Luffy and Crocodile earlier, but no, no, he uses Fishman Karate. He's even stronger in the water. Yeah, he was merely he even <laughs> said like I don't know how useful I'm gonna be on land. And, uh... And then once he gets in the water, sure enough, he just starts... Like, he's, like... He, like, blows a fucking hole through one of the battleships, and he's like, Whoops! Forgot we were gonna take that one! <laughs> like, Jinbei's so fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, man. I also really like how... Oh, and I like... Um, or, go on. I guess I could talk about this later, but I'm gonna talk about it now anyway. Um, sure, But sure. I like how Buggy, like, goes along with them. Like, he's there with Mr. One <laughs> yeah, I was gonna mention Crocodile, that, here. And, um... <laughs> And yeah, so like all the all the, all the like what the fuck am I doing? Convicts are like our hero, <laughs> Buggy the Clown, and then Buggy or <laughs> Captain Buggy, and then Buggy's just like, well, it, it makes more sense for me to go with these guys than to go there and wait for the warden to attack me, and then he just ends up getting wrecked while like the other two <laughs> take everybody. <laughs> right, out. right, but no one else sees. It. Well, I especially love his pose on on the door because Crocodile and Mister One are just standing there, but he's like he's got his knees out, he's got this fucking arms crossed, he's got this cool pose. <laughs> Buggy's just. He's, he's trying to be cool, but he's really... He's the joke character. <laughs> like, all throughout the arc, uh, like, Buggy, or, he's always like, I just want to escape. Like, I don't care about be about you know, being <laughs> heroic or anything. I just want... He's, he's always in it for himself. And, like, while in some cases, like, that does work against him, like, it also kind of... He just ends up happening to fall into these good situations. So, like, it, it also kind of works for him. Yeah, yeah, because at the end he was even like, let's go fight Whitebeard, you know, and he gets rallies everyone, all these prisoners that were, might have caused that was, problems. That was the greatest again, thing, because Buggy, like, he was all like, I want to escape, I don't want to be here. And, like, he could have, like, rallied, a, like, he could, like, not saying they would have necessarily been able to defeat, what, like, three guys or whoever would have been fighting them. I guess four, if you count mm -hmm. Mr. One. But, like, he could have, like, led a riot on that ship and, like, gotten them out of there, or at least attempted to. But he get, he gets yeah, such that's, a they big were head stuck, because like yeah, he, he feeds in all the hype that all these people are giving him, and like he just happens <laughs> to have this like really this really strong past through his connections, and so like it, it, he just he that feeds him, and he just he lets it get to him, and he's like we're gonna take down Whitebeard, let's go. 
Bucky is great. <laughs> Bucky is he is I, really I, good. I, well, it's like because I mentioned last time, like my favorite antagonists, and I threw a Buggy in there, and, and I thought about it later. And I'm like, why I mentioned Buggy above like all like Kuro and Craig? But now it's like now now yeah, you know yeah, why I meant mentioned him. Like I when like when would I have expected to see Buggy the clown in like this big of a role back after you know reading the first arc? <laughs> no, I thought like maybe he was just a one off antagonist, but he kept coming back. And I thought even then, like, he's still just kind of a goofball. He's just kind of here. But now he's, like, becoming, like, a serious... Like, the government sees him as a serious threat. Like, he was... He was no, on Gold yeah, Roger's ship. Even though he, he's, he's not. He's friends with Sh- but... Or, you know, he once knew Shanks. And, like, he led this yeah. big... He, like, he and Luffy are, like, the two big perpetrators of this big riot. Like, that's who yeah, yeah. the government like, sees. The, they casually bring up the Dark King Silver's Rayleigh. They just casually bring him up yeah. in conversation. It's like... <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> so now Buggy is almost like maybe not on the same level of a threat as Luffy, but like like the government almost puts him on that because like now he's had he's part of this big riot and it fell down. Oh my god. <laughs> Buggy. Um yeah. So anyway, Buggy's on, actually the final boss. Um yes, final boss, the the venom demon um with the super poison that threatens the whole prison, like it infects stone. And, um, you know, they continue to fight. And here's where the kind of miracle things come, comes into play a lot. Because, like, when they finally escape, they shoot off the, the door, out of the doors, and they land on the whale sharks. And so, like, okay, this is a gigantic fucking ass pull. Like, it's, it's sto- like, quote unquote. It's, but it's like, that's exactly why it works, I think. Because it's like, yeah, they never give up even when it looks bleakest. Like, they have no fucking reason to f- listen to Jinbei and, like, go into the water. Like... Even if you remember the, that mermaids can talk to fish, like, do we, do, can fishmen do the same thing? Like, Crocodile even mentions that they can't. Like, Jinbei's ability is, like, special and uh, somehow unique. So it's like, um, you know, it, it doesn't make you know, it, it's like, it's complete. But they because they keep fighting, a miracle happens. And the other thing I thought was interesting, because I realized, it's, all, it's also Luffy's, uh, he has trust in Jinbei. And that calls back to Alabasta, which was all about trust. And we, we have all these returning Alabasta characters. So that kind of factors into it, too. So so it's like, the fact that it's like a complete asshole, I think, actually works for the arc, because the arc is it miracles, you know? They never gave up, so a miracle the happened. The like series the series most... of assholes. <laughs> It, for, one piece is a series of asshole. No, um, that, it, it's it's the it's in the rules of the story. Okay, it's fine. But yeah, it's like so yeah, it's like them getting saved. It's like really cool. Um, even though you know, again, it like comes out of complete nowhere with pretty much no build up whatsoever. But it's it's all it all fits to the story and it works and I think it's good. Um, so yeah, but um, we're not quite done because there is one more uh, miracle that happens um, as the doors suddenly open as the ship is trying to escape and we find out that it was, uh, I like the cut back to, uh, to, um, Magalan. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, giving orders in the, in the control room. you got to open up those doors. And then Magalan comes in and sees Magalan and it's like, Oh shit. <laughs> oh yeah. Those, those doors yeah. being the gates of justice, by the way. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, I, I should have uh, stated because the, the gates of justice are, are some big doors. Um, well, that's what you were mentioning earlier, right? When you were like, oh, if I'd gone back a few pages, I might have noticed this uh, yeah, setup for yeah. a way later thing. Yeah, because like... Um, I actually, comp- yeah, I mentioned that because I forgot what you were talking about at that time, but I remembered and I was like, oh, this is what Mathos was talking about at that time. So, uh, or, um, yeah, <laughs> or go on. Or did you have anything to add or... Um... Well, yeah, I did kind of like how that was playing you... out because, like, even after they had like had this big miracle and escaped, uh, even then it's still like, well, now they're going to be trapped because of the gates of justice, and so like even right, right. even it's with not... a miracle, they still weren't entirely like free. Like it wasn't just like, oh, here's this, you, you know, here's this ass pull, and that that helps them escape. Like it wasn't the only reason. <laughs> like there was. It's also, not over yet. Yeah, yeah. There was exactly. a sacrifice needed. Right, because, you know, and yeah, Mr. Two, he sacrificed himself. Again! And, he does um, it again! <sighs> yeah, well, because, like, I especially like, because, like, Luffy even says, like, um, you know, you always help me, but I never get the chance to pay you back. And, you know, what, well, because, like, their whole thing is, like, like Mr. Two wants to be a friend, you know, he wants to be an, a good friend. And, like, my, because my, what I noticed about that, because it's, like, like, um, my mom has said stuff, like, where it's, like, because she's dealing with some stuff right now, and she's calling him favors from friends, and I'm, like... 
if you have to like haggle for favors, are they really your friends? Because like friendship is a mutual thing, and so I kind of like I've had you know help I, I help my friends if they need it, they help me if I need it. It's not like a you do I do kind of thing. It's just like we're friends, so we just help each other. And so that's like because that's the thing about you know, and that's what Mister Two does. He doesn't like think like oh yeah, Luffy owes me for this. No, he just wants to help Luffy because they're friends. So and it's it, so of course you know, and it turns you know he sacrifices himself so Luffy can go save Ace, and oh, it, it's a good moment. Um, uh, Mr. Two's so good, like that, and it's kind of like factors into his whole character arc from before about like his integrity, where it's like you know he just kind of did what he needed to to for his best interests, and so but now he's like genuinely like helping others, you know he 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 finally you know well not that he didn't have it at the end of Balabasta because he's it's kind of the same thing again, but it's like this is an even bigger situation that uh, he might not be able to get out of, so yeah. Um. Ugh, it's. I mean, like, it's like, like, how is he? Is he just gonna like fly over the water? Like, he's 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 kind of he's kind of fucked. And ooh, ooh, it's rough. Um, <laughs> Mr. Two is very good. Um, so yeah, I love the part where where Magalin's like any last words, and he's just like satisfaction, because he did it. Ooh, he did good. it. He's a good boy. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Um, we cut cut, cut to Blackbeard. Um. He was saved by Shiryu, and Shiryu's like, hey, I was waiting to meet someone like you, and it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, and that's the end of Blackbeard for uh, this stretch of chapter, or this that's arc, That's the rather. end of Blackbeard. Um, he's dead. He, he's dead. He died from the poison after all, the end. Um, so anyway, uh, everyone's recuperating on the ship, crying over Mr. Two. Um, so, um, oh yeah, there was, um, the, just Jinbei and Crocodile have an interesting conversation about the whole Fishman thing. And I thought it was interesting because it's like, yeah, not only can fishmen not normally talk to fish, um, but like, they're just the one, like, um, it's just like the way they talk and they're like, um, Crocodile's like, yeah, fishmen are so barbaric. And Jinbei kind of agrees. It's like, Crocodile's being a little, like, overgeneralizing there, but at the same time, like, Jinbei doesn't see it as different. So it's like, I don't know. Because we, we've gotten fishmen before, like, you know, we, we, their situation before as, you know, potential, like, you know, they're, they're desired as slaves and kind of looked down upon in certain parts of the world. So it's like, I don't know, seeing Jinbei kind of lean into some of that, even a little bit, of, of, of agreeing that fishmen are kind of barbaric, is, it's just, I find it pretty sad, kind of, like, but um, we'll probably learn more about fishmen we, in the future, if we actually ever get to Fishman Island, which we were supposed to go to after uh, <laughs> Thriller Bark, but that didn't happen. <laughs> um, um, so we already talked about the uh, this other, the boat scene, like the buggy stuff in general, um, so I'm not sure what else we have to mention. Uh, did you have any other thoughts? Because, uh... Yeah, Jinbei says that they're going to Navy headquarters. Um, Buggy figures it out with the with the pirates. He he restores their hope as their uh, leader, the former Roger pirate. <laughs> and yeah, they they charge off to go into go to the to fight in the war. I'm uh, um, gonna be really curious to see how this affects the the bounties of some of these characters. Like Buggy went <laughs> from like such a bit player to now he seems like he'll be one of like the big threats. So it's. <laughs> to, to the government, right, right. He's a, they're, they're comparing him to emperors, so it's like, oh, so from fifteen million to one point five billion, like, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, uh, so anyway, um, like, I don't, I don't know what it, what an actual like emperor bounty would be, but I guess, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so moving on. Um, so yeah, uh, they're ready to go to the war. We cut to Marineford. Ace is coming out onto the execution platform. We get some cuts to them as children, like uh, you know how they want to live without regrets and go to li- go to the sea. And that is the end of Ample Down. I really, and really right- like the panel where it's you know it's a life of true freedom, and it's the big lights as the doors open, and Ace is just again you know like wrapped in chains. Yeah. He- so it's like. Oh, so it's up. like the big freedom, but also well, like it's it's the juxtaposition, and it just looks real. Wait, right, right. The the childish desire for freedom in Ace's current situation, where he is the opposite of free. And plus, like oh, the way boy. that like the light is there, and it's like casting these shadows. So it's like he's walking out into the light, which I feel light is normally I think like good, but like in this instance, like he's walking out to his, his execution. So like it's kind of like it's really good like juxtaposition. I really yeah. like the. Again, like I liked the imagery of Ace being like chained up in the the prison in the prison and this is cell. Like yes, the yes. continuation of that. 
Yes, it's it's good. Oh, Anvil Down was good, in fact. It was good arc. I liked it. All right, it. now we're going to backtrack <laughs> a bit because we skipped over a popularity poll, but I didn't really want to interrupt the oh, discussion, shit. so I figured we'd just do it afterwards. I remember now because it was at the end of the volume, like, Pat, like, because it's like after the. Oh, yeah, there's like a SBS thing in after it, so I didn't even see it. <laughs> um, yeah, popularity poll. Um, so, yeah, Trafalgar Law is at number 10, even though he hasn't All done he anything. All he did was, like, he, flip see, somebody off. And, <laughs> I mean, he did a little more and than he, that. And he but. kind of, he, yeah, he did, he fought with, like, Kid and Luffy, and that was it. And so it's, like, purely for aesthetic reasons, he's more popular than Rest Usopp, peace, Mihawk. Usopp. <laughs> like, not even uh, top 10. <laughs> this guy who just showed up beats him in the popularity polls. Usopp deserved better. Justice for Usopp. Yeah. Um, Frankie's also fairly low for a straw hat. I think every other, except for those two, every other straw hat's in the top ten. Um, Ace uh, shot up because he's relevant yeah, now. Yeah, because he had that fight <laughs> with Blackbeard, and now it's like, oh, well, he was already basically in the top ten even by, like, only showing up once, so. Yeah, he's he's also super, like, relevant to the current story arcs, so I'm that helps. I'm surprised at how um, popular Chopper is. Like, he's number four, and it's just, like, he's just really cute. Like, that's, that's the little tagline. He, he is very cute. Like, yeah, everyone says how cute he is, yeah. Um, and Nami ended up passing Robin, which I think is interesting, because, like, in the last popularity poll, Nami was the lowest of the Straw Hats, because I don't think Frankie was a Straw Hat yet. Um, yeah, I think so. And, like, so. now she's back um, up at number six. Like, she's above Robin, she's above Brooke, above, above Usopp, and I can't really think of, like... Also, the... Ta- the or, I, I can't remember everyone else, yeah. Um... Though I was going to say, because I, I thought it was interesting, because Robin also apparently received a lot of votes from girls, which is neat. Because um, just noticing all the little, like, the little words they have. Um, and Brooke plays pretty high, too, because of Thriller Bark, I imagine. Um, uh, yeah, but um, any other ones just, from the... I'm... Oh, Mary ranked uh, 25th, sorry. Yeah, um... I just really like how some of these characters who have, like, only shown up and done, like, really one major thing and otherwise have just kind of, like, appeared every like like mihawk is still number 12 even though like he's only just kind of been <laughs> shuffled around in the background yeah. right right oh <laughs> okay this, that's interesting um at 73rd place uh you have a uh, montblanc cricket a uh, gaiamon a character who literally hasn't appeared in like over five almost 500 like f- what 500 chapters and tied with both of them are tied with monkey d dragon yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something about that's funny to me because it's like you have like a, a, a practically a joke character from a really old arc, you know, a, a really a fairly important side character from his arc, and then like one of the most important characters in the setting. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he hasn't done much yet, but um, yeah, I mean, he's higher than Gold Roger, um, so yeah. Though we did get a bit more about Go- Gold Roger uh, at Sabote, so <laughs> I'm looking at the the the, the lowest. Uh, place of the rankings and apparently one vote was given to the the doctor who shook hands with luchi in the cover <laughs> story so uh he he got some votes <laughs> or a vote at least um along with some of the uh like some uh, uh, like uh, oh Mik- mikio ito the uh bounty poster from that uh has also shown uh, that was like on, on the old sbs uh, like just the, that random dude so uh eh, it's fun the, the joke ones are always fun so yeah we did sk- so yeah that's uh any other thoughts on the popularity poll i mean luffy's being number one is uh expected honestly <laughs> um but it's also good well i say that but then i've mentioned before it's like it's not that often where the main character ranks like as like as far as what we've read so far one he- one Piece is the only one where the main character is actually number yeah, one. Yeah, like, like uh, um, in Naruto, Sasuke had it a couple times. Bleach, Ichigo right. so like, was a yeah, Naruto was always struggling against... <laughs> he was up there, but not, like, up, up there. Like, even in... I don't think he was ever number one. Naruto might have been number one, like, once or twice. So, but then Luffy's always been number one. So, well, I, yeah. thought, I thought Naruto, um, it was usually, like, pretty consistently back and forth between Naruto and Sasuke. Or am I... Kakashi was also pretty high up there, but I don't remember if Kakashi was ever first. Um, maybe you're right. I don't remember. Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember Bleach being it. Like Ichigo might have had it once, and then that was kind of it. He's been. A, he was in the top five, but I don't think it was ever first place. Maybe maybe in the first one, if at all. But Mar- Rukia might have been first that in the first popularity poll because Rukia is very good. <laughs> so yes, I uh, I like Rukia. She's a good girl. Anyway, um, so yeah, that is Empel Down. It was a good arc. I honestly. I'm not sure, like, out of, like, it's hard to rank, rank, like, with these arcs, because it's, like, 
there uh, do I consider them all like one saga or several different arcs? Like, are, there's technically like because like the V's volumes, um, they they count Amazon Lily as part of the Bodhi, but some people count Amazon Lily as its own arc. Um, but Empire was good. I liked it. Um, I'm not sh- like I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite arcs, but it, yeah, it's really good. I liked it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what else I have to say. I said a lot already. Um, yeah, it was very good. So uh, next time we will be doing the the Paramount War proper um next week uh chapters 550 to 594 uh so it's gonna be a longer stretch of chapters a a six hour dead show oh no i mean that will because that's also episode 14 so like episode number wise we are coming where um we're coming this uh, 14 was where naruto ended though hour wise i'm pretty sure naruto's still like like i think i did the math and naruto was at like 40 hours total and where was one piece where is one piece at currently um, cause one piece, we've had shorter episodes cause I've been trying to keep them shorter. Yeah. One piece is at, uh, one through 11 is at 26 out or 27, 26, 59. So that's 27 hours for the first, um, 11 episodes. So we're going to surpass the, the length of Naruto by the end of it. But, uh, Naruto is still our longest discussion, like hour wise, um, at the moment. But yeah, um, also, I don't, um, if you have my, uh, arc ranking saved from before, I have changed it. Because uh, Dre- one future arc is going was it was going to be like two episodes for like 150 chapters, and after Sabodi where we had like three almost three hours on 30 chapters, I'm like, oh fuck, that's not gonna work. <laughs> We're gonna be at the, oh, those that's gonna be like two five hour episodes. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. So I split it up a bit more. So. Um, we're we're currently pl- the current plan for One Piece is 21 episodes before the the end of the last uh ended arc. Uh, so yeah. Um. Just uh, letting you know. So, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, uh, Catch you next time.